Um, <coughs> how you been? Good, how about you? I don't know. It seems like a loaded question. It seems like we both just asked loaded questions to each other. <laughs> That's because we're Irish, so. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, how's the last few couple weeks been? We haven't been on, we haven't done anything lately because we're so, I hate using the excuse every time we're like, oh, we're so busy, but we actually are. Yeah, we kind of are. And we want to do these as much as possible and blah, 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 but, you know, if, we, if, if, if life worked on a, a, a designated schedule, our lives would be a lot easier, but... Um, we hate it because that's why we're not nine to fivers. We're twenty five haters. <laughs> so stupid. Um, so tonight's the night of the Steamtown Music Awards. So as everyone knows, this is being well, not as everyone knows, but just to let everyone know, this is recorded uh, September thirteenth, um, and we're up for best podcast, which I think you know snowballs chance in hell. Yes, um, we're also, but it's still cool for less than a year. Yeah, it's nice. And then um, I hope I, I, I kind of I. I, I, I kind of feel good if anyone else other than us won. <laughs> if, like, it'd be nice to win, but I think, um, you know, everyone else, I mean, I think I think their stuff is so good. So, um, I know you don't believe any of what I'm saying right now. And then we're up for uh, recording studio of the year. Um, which I don't think we have a snowball's chance in anyways, but um, it would be nice to see um, Angelo play tonight with University Drive, and then Angelo's playing tomorrow night with his band The Bone Flowers, which for anyone who doesn't know or for anyone who cares, um, we're working on the Bone Flowers album right now, and if I can just say it's going to be spectacular. I agree. And I don't say that often about stuff that we do out of here. The Bone Flowers album is going to be great so i hope we do i hope we do some behind the scenes videos on that and stuff too because we're, we're, we're recording it in a really interesting way um that makes jimmy very happy and angelo very happy <laughs> and uh i hope that comes out by the end of the year because it's going to be phenomenal <laughs> and something that we're really proud of um today we are talking to um the amazing uh ferret Connor O'Brien um, about Scranton French Festival and their programming and how they got started and the arts community around here and I think it's very important that we talk about stuff like this because even though um, uh, you know there's 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 a world at large our hometown is important too and we have to talk about uh, what's going on in our hometown especially to enlighten minds mm -hmm. um, and to introduce people to things art is supposed to be thought-provoking um, and the French Festival not only does that, they do it in spades. And they do it um, for everywhere, for every, every, from, from everyone, from children to adults, they have programming for. And I think it's a really, uh, Connor and, and, and uh, Liz, uh, I think are doing a, an exceptional job, especially considering it's year four. <clears throat> Which means the last three years were in a failure. <laughs> um, there's a couple interesting things brought up um, about uh, the economic impact that um, Fringe has to Lackawanna County in general. And I was very surprised by the numbers of that. They're very positive. Mm -hmm. um, and I think um, just a great organization and a great event. And they're, they're doing it for nine days this year. And it starts on September 22nd. Um, I'm sure we're going to repeat it 8 million times, but <laughs> um, for anybody looking for tickets or information, go to uh, scrantonfringe.org, mm -hmm. and you will get all your information there. And I just want to make sure I say one more time, if you're looking for accommodations, go to scrantonfringe.org backslash, backslash hotels. And there's an discounts. S. And there's discounts for <clears throat> hotels. Um, tickets are, are uh, $12 per show. Some are free. Some are free. Mm -hmm. And if you, get a, if you buy a fringe button you for $5 you get $4 off per show. So after two shows, you've already made your money back. Um, and then everything, every other show is at a discount. I, I, I recommend and highly hope that a lot of people go um, to something mm -hmm. because the programming is very diverse. Um, the artists are very diverse. The venues are very diverse. And, uh, it, and the community comes together 
uh, especially especially <clears throat> businesses to to make sure that this is this is a thing and and they should be proud of their participation and, and throwing money at it and especially so, with the buttons because you can use the buttons to get discounts at like 22 places yeah 22 in stores yes if for until December 30th 31st 31st I'm 31 sorry days in, se- in December <laughs> yeah sorry but that's you're thinking cra- of September <laughs> that one but no i think that's really cool because it's like it's already over but you can still i yeah, mean people all come in, back all in under the fringe and even if you're not from here you just buy one anyways and when you come back to see your family for thanksgiving and christmas or whatever like you can go christmas you shopping you're, you're yeah absolutely yeah. that's awesome good for you fringe festival yes fringe festival good for you local yes. businesses supporting fringe <laughs> festival so anything else nope without further ado Let's get to the intro. I like how I like like wedge myself into here. Did you ever <laughs> notice that? I have to open it like a kiosk on a subway. <laughs> and then just find my way to being fatter. <laughs> oh, you're losing weight. Mm. You look good. Hot. <laughs> is this what this podcast is going to become? Yep, I think so. Mark looks great. Let's, I, let's all talk about how much we like Mark. I don't and hate it. And go. <laughs> Anything that you guys want to say about me that is positive and, 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 and reinforces... I my- like how Mark makes no impression when he walks into a room, yet he still stays. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That's so brave. No, I'm serious. I wish I had that confidence. <laughs> what are you being absolutely sincere about that? Oh, no, I'm, I'm just fucking with you. No, because I don't know how people perceive me. Like, no, how does, no, how does no, there's, the there's absolutely nothing more untrue than saying you don't make an impression when you walk into a room. Wait, so I do? <laughs> I want that courage. Where I want to go. go? How about he goes? I like the fact that when Mark rocks into a room, he doesn't make an impression no. and he still stays. Yeah, no, but I love that. I love. I, uh, I appreciate his courage. <laughs> I mean, Connor, does that make me brave? <laughs> Again, sure. <laughs> no, but when, for people who, that's not you, but for people who are really like that, yeah. You know the person that makes no impression when they come into a room, but they're still there. It's like when like, you, it, is there like like, you is see it, a ghost in your peripheral vision, but it's just Dave. <laughs> <laughs> is there, is there like a, is there like a, like a celebrity that you can think of that would, that would, cause we don't want to, we don't want to get anybody local. Is there a celebrity that I think probably makes no impression when they walk into a room? Um, yeah, like maybe like Amy Adams. No, I wouldn't. No, no, you think she, so? No, she's she's glowing. Who's somebody that's just really dull? Is that is that what oh. it means? Is it like dull? Like um, Renee Zellweger? Maybe she walks into a room. Of, and- no, it just means that like it doesn't always mean a good thing. You can be a lovely, beautiful, attractive person and just make no impression. Like you know the people you just want to put a yeah, bell. Yeah, you just want to put a well, bell on them. <laughs> I love this podcast already. And for what purpose? And for and what purpose would you here put? Comes Carol. Here comes Carol. Ling, 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 ling. Um, yeah, just to know that she's coming. <laughs> yeah, duck. <laughs> Hide what, the cheese. Whatever your, opinion, whatever your opinion of Carol is. Um, no, I'm trying to think. From accounting. Good, Carol from accounting. Carol from accounting. Who's yeah. a celebrity that you think is really dull? Like you just do not, like, in, in, who's in, think about it, <coughs> talk shows. Who have you seen lately on a talk show or even just a clip that you're like. You know like, what? I really like Sean Penn, but I think he's very D- dull. Like yeah, I think he's changed. You know who else is dull? Me. Uh, Elon Musk. Yes. Well, he got the attention. He's brilliant. <laughs> so I think that he's like, he's like a. You know, it, he, he seems he seems over calculated. Who's, who's the big heavy set computer guy? Not it wasn't Jobs. Wozniak. Lee Schaefer. Wozniak. Yeah. Wozniak. Oh. <laughs> Did you ever see him in an interview? The man is just a goob. Mm-hmm. Really? The man is just a big old intelligent, very generous, well-meaning goober. Like <laughs> <laughs> he was like that on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah. Sure. See, even he didn't watch that, and you did. No, I did the okay. promos when that's I worked okay. at the news station. That's okay. Here comes the Waz doing the salsa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just he and his dance is about his personality. Do you know, you can buy this suit at nine ninety nine at Men's Warehouse. <laughs> the trick about staying rich is being is not being frugal. They are. <laughs> um. Sean Penn, really? I haven't seen him. Is he dull? He was. Ju- he wrote a book, and he was just. The man like locks people in homes and plays mind games with them. Remember that? <laughs> no. But... Remember when he and Madonna were together, and he like apparently locked her in a house for three days, and they just like played mind games. Well, apparently it didn't work. 
<laughs> or did it? Or yeah, I was gonna say. I'm gonna have a Look daughter named now. Lourdes. Um, is that their is that their kid's name? No, they didn't have a kid. Thank oh, God. Okay. <clears throat> Can you imagine that kid? No. No. The spawn of Madonna and Sean Penn, and I like. Ooh. I think Sean Penn's actually a, like a like a decent. I like guy. Madonna. I'm not. I'm not even here making fun of her. I mean, she's crazy, but I <laughs> but I think she's a good performer. Yeah, but you. That's like that's like. But that's like that's like a. You know, like the girl who's like you know very attractive, but is a psychopath. Because I have this. I have this theory, and it sounds. Incre- I have some too. It right, and my theory is incredibly sexist, and I'm sure people will agree. Is that like. Like beauty is defined in the eyes of the beholder, right? So like what I find beautiful is is obviously not what somebody else finds beautiful. So like what I find beautiful, like let's say I'm like, oh my God, like I think Victoria is a 10, mm-hmm. right? Oh, she is. But if, she Victoria, is. but if Victoria had a personality of like a two, mm-hmm. that makes her a six. Well, I think it would make her a two. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I'm shallow and I can overlook a couple points. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, well then. Because wait a minute, I'm a man. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So, so she's really a 10, which of course she is. She is I, a no, 10. I think she's, a, she's an 11. She's a, she's a 10, but you're saying if she had the personality of a two, that only bumps her down four points? No, if you average them together. So if you take 10 plus two divided by two. Oh, I see. Okay. She's a six. Okay. Your math is right. Yeah, so that's that's why, I, and, and I it's see. incredibly shallow. But I, it, it goes to the point where, like, you know, you could have a ten as a personality, yeah. and you know, in the shallow world that we live in, a seven in looks I that makes you an eight and a half. To say that you know, beauty's in the eye of the polder. We all know that. Do you know what I think is interesting? I always assumed personalities were pretty universally good or bad. Like, of course, there's exceptions. It's the only reason you can't that, make the only reason like, I'm engaged. <laughs> it's not my looks. <laughs> No, we were in a conference call yesterday with a Skype call. I That's told the money. guy, I, I'm like, I, do I look like the kid from Free Willy grew up? He did, and he pointed. <laughs> and he I even pointed. pointed. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it's like some big exec in Hollywood. He I'm is. like, hey, does he is? <laughs> and I did the point too. I'm like, jump, Willie. <laughs> but he laughed. He enjoyed it, so yeah. it worked. <laughs> and I think, Are and you I, the kid from Free Willy, or you're Willie? Yes, no, 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 no I'm oh, Willie. Yeah. Well, you know, no. I Last said time you, you saw me, good. I was Willie. No, no, never. I, I had a, think, I had no. a crooked fin. I'm going to be totally honest. I think <laughs> like a sad a, fin. In a in a platonic <laughs> kind of way, I think you're I think you're a total nine. <laughs> <laughs> and that's with the average, right? I'm a nine. I just, is it just two nines or is it like a ten and an eight? I've known you too long, so it just blends. <laughs> No, I'm serious. No, no. How did, did we first meet at the Vintage? Is that where we first met? We first met at the Vintage on Penn Avenue. Um, we might have like met. We may have met, like, but it was like in a, in a passing. Yeah, no. It, you and Tim came in. Um, we were doing some kind of marketing. Tim brought you in for some reason. I don't remember. It was like some. No, wasn't it the Wasn't it the Story Slam? Is that no, where we first met? It was before, before that. that? I knew was, of you. You were like was a. Doing, were you? Well, you everybody by, knows him. Were you brought in by Pam? <laughs> He'd be surprised. Were you brought in by Pam for the story slam, and that's how we met? I just thought I knew. I just thought I met you I before that. I remember you and me and Tim having a meeting. Like Teresa couldn't come or something. It was just the three of us. You did not take your sunglasses off. It was like <laughs> oh, indoors. Because it's always sunny, douchebag. It was, it was indoors at the Penn <laughs> Avenue place, which you remember is like a, just yeah. a big open hallway. That was that was that my I thought I was Bono phase. <laughs> <laughs> it was before because remember we were looking. Remember? Oh no, I remember what it was. I think you came in for the story slam. We met, like, hi, how you doing? Because I think right, Pam right. hired you, right? I don't know. I got paid like a nickel for I that. I mean, I mean, yeah. You were brought in by her. I didn't bring you in. <laughs> um, we were just, we were just the venue. Um, and then uh, we were looking to move at the time. This is right. before we actually, we actually were looking to move once we signed. We re-signed a lease one more time. We were looking to move, and you, me, and Tim, and uh, the realtor, uh, yeah, yeah, Scott, yeah. were looking at spaces. We went to that one on the bank building. Oh, that's when we were looking for space here. It was when we were, the idea was originally like, we would all Like a commune. Correct. And then we kind of had to lock down and we, I think like our needs didn't overlap. And then, yeah. And then you guys came out here. I remember I came and looked with you at this place. I I have the photos of you with us looking at at it. Looking at it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was that our first Was that the first tour? Sure. Mm -hmm. It was the first tour, yeah. Our first tour. (laughs) First world tour to parking lot behind Coopers. Um, Oh, thanks. Now you're telling everybody where we're at. Oh, I'm sorry. (laughs) Not that Google didn't take care of that. I locked the door, just so everybody knows. (laughs) You can't get in. So, I mean, we we used to, what was the last time we talked? The last time we talked was the uh, Richest Podcast, the NPA Scene Podcast, wasn't it? The last time we had a, you and I were on a podcast together. Oh, on a podcast. Yeah, okay. We we do talk outside (laughs) of this. (laughs) You the just got to remind him of the... The minute the, the camera call. turns off, it's like, all right, bye. <laughs> <laughs> 
Who's that Irish boy? <laughs> What was that Irish boy's name again? <laughs> Mick something, right? Yeah, yeah. Mick Shanty Curtain. <laughs> yeah. Wife Beatty. Oh, Pansy. What was his name? Like it was like it was strange. Like oh, do you know George. My, do you know? Have I? Do you know my full stage name now? Dude, I, do you? Do the bottom of the cuffs of your pants are they elastic? They're trainers. Yeah. <laughs> they're so comfortable. <laughs> I bet. Oh, I bet. Great. What are you? What are you doing? What are you? Are you, are you rehearsing for old age, or is, what's going on? <laughs> I'm just dying. I mean, you look. I, I mean, the thing about, I think you and I both, uh, we we dress how we want to feel. Yeah. No, I'm I'm living yeah. my best life. Yeah. It's not like it's not like like, like my grandfather you, had this saying where it's like you know the way you dress is the way people will treat you, and that's I guess that's why I've been treated like shit for years. I'm just. <laughs> I, people just keep their distance, so it's working. <laughs> Um, There's that Irish kid. No oh, pants. <laughs> Stay away from him. Get to their side I of the street, wear, honey. Grab I the kids. I just wear clothes three ba- three sizes too big. Yeah. And then um, I just sweat a lot. Uh, and there's like patches of hair that haven't been shaved in certain parts of my neck. <laughs> yeah. Um, why are you such a fucking mess? And I'm doing great. I don't know. I don't know. I'm doing great. I clean up really well. No, I mean that's the thing. That, but like, that's the thing that like kind of made me like um, pl- plutonically fall in love with you. Is that right. is that like you have zero shame? <laughs> you you you. And no one can make me laugh like you, and no one can put it into perspective the way that you do. And the Aww. thing is, is, and the other thing is too is, and and I don't know if I don't know if everybody knows, like everybody knows like fun Connor. Um, but they really don't. <laughs> okay. No, it's like it's like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm wearing jorts. Um, <laughs> But but you're you're fiercely intelligent. And I, oh yeah, like you and I would sit and talk. I mean, we talk politics, we talk you know human rights, we talk social issues, and and, and not necessarily agree. No, and not necessarily agree. But at the same time, like you've opened my eyes to a lot of things because hmm. I was like, and there's a huge age difference between you and I. Um, I think there's like ten years. Well, it, it's that's big. How old are you? I'm 38. Oh, okay, yeah, 11. All right, so it's all right. So you're closer in age to me than my fiance. <laughs> How old is Victoria? Uh, 26. I just turned 27. So what? when does she turn 27? April. April. Oh, okay. So I'm like a, just about a year older than her. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. maybe you and I should get together and I'm, and I'm going for I'm going for older older men now. Um, <laughs> I'm such a scumbag. Do you have money too? No. 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 Connor and I would be in the back of a hatchback. <laughs> no. You know, no. Pe- Pelling our wares. No. Whatever we got to do. No. Mark's none of my sugars. What are you talking about? <laughs> so, um, but I think that's like I think that's like a big miss, in, at least in my experience. Like, I've never had anybody come up to me and be like, a, 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 you know, Conor O'Brien's like Steve Wozniak. Like, I've never had, you know, anybody say that, but it was never your intention. You're just fiercely no, intelligent. I'm, thank you. I'm really glad no one's ever seen that. You remind me of Steve Woz. You remind me of Woz. Oh, wow. Okay. I don't know what I ever did to you. Wow. All right. No, but I'm trying to give you a, a really I, strange I backhanded that. that's, compliment. That's very sweet. Thank you. Um, that you're really, really smart. Thank you. <laughs> What's that word? Oh, it's smart. You're really, really smart. <laughs> really, really smart. No. So, how did you get involved in the in the in the in the arts world? Because you, because I, I mean, you were oh. doing this in high school, man. And oh, like, yeah. what was the impetus for it? Um, so <laughs> that's a really good segue. Um, I was a really weird kid. Uh, hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> which translated into weird, really adult. weird or adult? <laughs> yeah. No. Um, I was a bit of an oddball kid. Um. <laughs> So anybody watching this at home is watching you like like yeah. re, like 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 O C D this We're like talking this. to you and you're looking away. I don't want to I'm, well I'm making contact with the camera. It's my Connor never makes oh, okay. eye contact. It's my okay. only friend. I yeah. actually it's am a doing, safety mechanism. No, I'm not even kidding you. That's actually no longer necessarily true. I've been doing As really you stare well. right at me. No, I've been doing really well with that because I was told no, because I've been like, you're like overdoing it. <laughs> People say I'm unsettling. Yeah. You're looking at me like Lee looks at a ham sandwich. <laughs> He's not here. He did nothing he, to me. I will here. do it forever. He looks amazing. Can we speaking of people who look amazing, oh. he looks oh my god. You know I saved his life, right? Fox. 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 Did you did you hear about that? I saved his life. Oh, you gave him the Heimlich maneuver or something? Yes, did I, I did. Hear that? That's right. Yes, I oh. did. I put I put these two arms around. Then we found out later that number one, Jim, Jimmy's certified as a teacher. <laughs> okay. And Lee goes, well, Marky had to do it because his arms are longer. <laughs> right? We, tr- we tested. Jimmy's arms are longer than mine. Really? Yeah, Jimmy's built like a chimp. <laughs> Apparently, I have these little Vern Troyer arms oh that I God, wasn't aware of comparatively. Here. Oh, I, you, you know, that's your, dynamic, your, your dynamic is their dynamic. Yeah, yeah. I understand. Mm-hmm. That's the I way understand. it is. And we have to make sure everybody's harassed equally. We're an equal opportunity um. harasser amongst <laughs> friends. 
because that's important. It, it is, is important. But anyways, anyways. <laughs> Recycle it. Um, <laughs> weird kid. Weird kid. Uh, my sister took me to an audition for Our Town, actually. It was my oh. first acting role. It was when... Um, I don't know. Was that something that you wanted to do, or was she just like, "Come on, Connor"? It was like, eh, "Let's do something." It was uh, me, her, and my niece, her daughter um, Anna, who's actually closer in age to me than I am to my siblings. Um, I'm really we're calling a lot of people out on ages here. Sorry, Maggie. <laughs> um, no, you uh, bird. No, not at all. No, um, Maggie's beautiful and gorgeous. Yeah, she is. Um, but this is about me, not her. Oh, we are. We no, there was no illusion. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, so she took me and Anna to an audition It was when Scranton, I don't know if they still do it It was like the one city, one book thing Which I loved the Orwellianness of it Like we're all gonna read the same book <laughs> No, um, I don't remember um, They still do it I think But like one year it was like the Crucible And then everyone just killed themselves And then um, <laughs> they, then they did Our Town um, It's like one of the great American classics Right. Uh, so they were doing a production it, it was being mounted at the high school But it was like a community thing And we just auditioned and I got the part of George um, Don't know who that is, but okay. okay. If anyone who reads our town, congratulations. He's, he's like the the male, like the boy lead, like the he's not the he's not even the thir- second or third biggest part, but it's like the biggest part. Of- is he awkward or weird? Uh, my version was. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't take characters on or off stage. So. <laughs> I just am. Um, I no. love that. <laughs> uh, no. Um, no. Someone asked me that once. They're like, it was like this really like, like <clears throat> elitist interview, and they were like, so do you take your every part of your characters off stage? And I'm like, they're lucky if they come on. <laughs> um, did the check clear? <laughs> and they're gonna be on. <laughs> They might be late, <laughs> but they will be on. No, um, so we did that, and I, I and then I know it's cliche, but I got bit by the bug. Yeah, um, and then I did a bunch of like community theater things. <laughs> I got my first paid gig, I think, when I was like 16, 17. Um, it was for a play. Uh, now, when you see the bug, is like, what's the thing that like gravitates you towards it? Is is it is it the narcissistic idea? desire for attention? <laughs> I mean, everyone <laughs> understands that, sure. but but outside of that, um, is it is it is it because I, because I, you know, I'm I'm on I'm you know that right now I'm in front of the camera, but most most of the time, 99 percent of the time, I'm behind the camera, and I and and like so the motivation of like that process, like I've always been fascinated with the mm-hmm. acting process and why and and what's what's like yeah. what's the thing that you find um like 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 is it something that you seem like all right this character almost seems insurmountable so I need to prove to myself that I can I can do it or that. Or is it just like you just show the fuck up and you just say your lines and make sure that Hit the your mark, mark yeah, just Hit your mark look good. <clears throat> but you don't, um, you don't like no. delve into a character. No, you I don't do. Learn? I'm being, I'm being very sn- snotty. Um, um, I don't. When I say I don't believe, I don't mean it doesn't exist. It just doesn't work for me. I've tried method acting. I studied it for almost a year. I hated it. I hated it with every fiber of my being. It like wrecked me up. Well, yeah, because it's psychological. Yeah. You're psychologically torturing yourself. That's you know? not acting to me. Mm-hmm. That's not like I. I don't. I can teach like improv, and I could teach like high schoolers acting. I right. could never teach it. Do you ever see Saving Private Ryan? Yes. Do you remember the scene where they storm the hill and Giovanni Ribisi gets gets killed, and he's saying yeah. like "mother, mother, mother." Yeah. And then they cut away to Tom Hanks. He walks up, and he's he's all alone, and he just starts sobbing mm-hmm. up there. Is that was that a real moment? No, uh, no. So somebody who like I think it was Barry Pepper who was the sniper in that movie said, mm-hmm. you know, and this was after he won, you know, Forrest Gump, Philadelphia, Forrest Gump. Mm-hmm. You know, now he's like America's dad. But mm-hmm. he's like, you know, the amazing thing about Tom Hanks is that like I remember the day we shot that, mm-hmm. and about twelve seconds before he shot that because it's a one shot push. Mm-hmm. He's like he was laughing, telling jokes, yeah. whatever, and he's like the moment action happens, it was like. His whole persona changes and then cut, sure. and he's like, "All right, now the end of that joke is." Yeah, wow. That's I mean, I mean, I'm not Tom Hanks, and that's that takes. But there's, a- but I think there's some who get who think that you have to have this this no. you know like the Heath Ledger, you know, God rest his soul. But like, maybe he went too far on that one. I, I don't think acting's what did it for him, but I but I think that that might have been. I think that's a manifestation of something problem. Um, the the if I ever. I, See, and I, well, I bring that up because that's what people. That's the perception. And, and that's, that, that's, that's the mm-hmm. perception. The of perception what it is. is that acting is this like very <laughs> dramatic and very. Yeah. And if I that's, need four weeks in a in a in a in a small. If that's cottage what in allows Montana. you to present good work and good is subjective, then yeah, great. I mean, you both have worked behind and in front of the camera and in behind. I mean, uh, to the be only honest, time Stacey you, saw me do it was terrible. To be honest with you, <laughs> ask your, I would ask yourselves as directors, what do you get? The what's the best 
kind of res- like work you've ever seen out of an actor from your direction. And I don't. I uh, to be absolutely honest with you, mm-hmm. it's not a direction. Mm-hmm. I think. I think it's. Um, I, I. You know. There's. There's these little. This. This is what makes me believe in magic. There's these little things of magic. You make it. <laughs> no, I, oh, fucking quote. I should never. Thanks. Oh, Mark, thanks for cutting that, Stacy. For the di- for the rest of my life, that'll be my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> really? Are you is still that getting good royalty checks from that fire? No. <laughs> What did I say? These guys save lives. These guys lives. save lives, but we make magic. <laughs> it's my favorite thing. I was. I, I was, woke up and I was like, "It's today!" Because I read it the night before, and then I saw it in the paper, and I was like, "It's Christmas!" I like went out the window, like opened the window. You there, boy? What day is it today? <laughs> what me, sir? It's the day Mark Tenenbaum made the most pretentious <laughs> quote in the Scranton Times. Oh, clever boy, remarkable boy. Oh my God, I love him. I was, it was supposed to be make believe. <laughs> to be fair, yeah, Mark, did you make magic? No. To be fair, I have I have had some horrifically bad quotes in stuff. I don't think it's bad. Do you think it's bad? I don't think it's bad. <laughs> Is it really like wait? wait what makes it, it pretentious? What makes it that pretentious? I shouldn't even say pretentious. It was just so. Ugh. I was trying to contrast the fact I that know, what I do I is know, nothing I compared know, to what I know. these guys do. I understand that you chose magic <laughs> as the word that you went to. That's what it is. Sure. I was under pressure. Okay. Stacey Lang is yeah. an intimidating ju- a journalist. She is. Oh, she is, though. And what's so funny is that she's like so eagle-eyed focused. And then kind of the same thing from an mm-hmm. acting perspective, though. <clears throat> like in a social situation, she's the... Darling, best. Mm-hmm. You know, super smart. Just you know, <clears throat> chill. Whatever, all's good. Oh, mm-hmm. it's all great. Yeah, and but when the, it comes to her job, she's on yeah. it. Like, oh ooh, my gosh, ooh. I directed her for mm-hmm. a few years, and I mean, mm-hmm. she was like one of the reporters that she would have her notes, but she didn't even look down at them because she would remember like her ins and outs because on live shots. Because she wrote it down. Yes, yeah. but she she's so good she's at brilliant. it. Nothing so frazzles good. her. I know. She's and I mean, amazing. As we saw in some situations, literally nothing frazzles her. I know. She was. I've only been interviewed by her. Oh, the F and the P guy? Yes, once. Uh, yes. I didn't even want to. Were you there at the WP when that happened? Yes. Mm-hmm. I didn't even want to bring what it up. What happened? Well, I wasn't in the control room then because I was working morning. That was a live shot, wasn't it? was a live shot, yeah. But I mean, she, the guy tried to grab the microphone and she just grabbed it back and just kept going. Oh, I mean, she, she was, was like amazing. The news guy. She, was, she was amazing. Pro. Did you She's see, remember the, remember the news guy who the guy ran up to, he was doing the weather or something and the guy literally, the, the reporter just stuck out his knee and hit the guy in the stomach? <laughs> I never he started saw that. running towards him and he just so went like many. this. And he hit I the guy and the guy was like, Ugh, and just kept running. <laughs> never saw that. Like it knocked the wind out of him and he just kept going. There's like compilations yeah, I didn't on miss YouTube. A beat. I, like Stacy, like holy shit, like yeah, in a situation she's like that, so professional. to keep your, like to keep yeah. your composure, absolutely, she, no she's, offense she's to this area, the she needs to be on Dateline. <laughs> she's one of the best. I, I definitely phenomenal. agree. All right, so back to mm-hmm. Gawky, our town. <laughs> You chose the word gawky. Okay. But you what it was. Um, <laughs> kind of still up. Um, t- you look like one of those uh, things that sells cars. <laughs> but you look so good. Yeah, um, sometimes when you move, I see you coming down the street and I'm like, where's the air? I was told once the- that it looks like a spider and a horse. A fucked spider and a no, horse? No, a spider and a horse fucked each other. That's you? The way I walk. <laughs> my lawn face. My- there you go. Um... <laughs> Do you do birthday parties? I'm just curious. <laughs> only, only recently. <laughs> um, there's layers to that joke. Um, uh, so, so I, but, I mean, you got yeah, bit by the bug. I got bit by the bug, uh, and then I did uh, some like small professional theater, and then I did my first commercial, which was actually local. Um, you may recall. Sit on the stairs? Was that yeah. the one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Give me some credit. <laughs> to this day, once in a blue moon, I think they still run it like in weird rotations. Once in a blue moon, someone will like shout from a car. As they're driving by? Give me some credit. <laughs> That's that, awesome. that, hasn't That's- happened. that hasn't happened in a long time, but when it first came out, it was, because it was like, and like, I don't know what it was, if it's just, I looked that weird, but when... Because there was like a series of them, and I swear to God, and again, maybe I'm just you being a so narcissist. You were so young, you had no reason to have credit. <laughs> I don't. I didn't drive. <laughs> I still Acting. don't own a car. Acting. Acting. I have a good job. Give me some credit. <laughs> um, Dan Simrel fed me that line like a hundred times. I was not. And no offense, Dan. I'm, I'm going to be totally honest. Nothing I did. I don't think he liked one second of that. He'd be sitting there and he'd be like, I'd be like, give me some credit. And then he'd go, cut, give me some credit. Okay, go. 
And I would just keep saying it over and over, and it got to the point where I was like, okay, you just gotta tell me what you want me to. I don't, I don't, I don't yeah, know. Give me a line reader. I, like he, 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 he was, and I still wasn't getting it. <laughs> Um, but it, it it turned out fine. Well, I mean that, but that's the beauty. Like part of that, like and and and, and like there's a lot of there's a lot of world around here for for commercial filmmaking mm-hmm. um, and and for talent. But you know, kind of like you're 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 a theater dude. Mm-hmm. You know, you love that. I do love theater. I, I and to I, me, that's the scariest thing. Oh, see, no, I. Oh, God, no, I disagree. I mean, I I can understand that. I you and I have had discussions about my fear of theater. I film and television scares me ten times. I mean, I I want to do it because it pays better, but <laughs> um, it, that terrifies me to no end because it's documented. It's forever theater. No matter how much I fuck up, it was in a moment and it's over, and then it's. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? A couple hundred did eat, people. Did, did you eat Chipotle? You okay? <laughs> no, excuse me. I actually haven't eaten today. That was just that was just was a, the, that's acid reflux. The, oh, that, no, that's just that's just that's, you're like one of those. That's just me. You're like one of those Suzanne Summers kids. What? Do you remember her? I do know who she is. I don't remember her children having like acid step reflux by problems. step or what? <laughs> oh, you oh, mean her like no, not kids? Suzanne oh. Summers. Who's the lady from uh, uh, that show that was uh, All in the Family? Sally Struthers. Oh, oh, oh. all I see oh. is in South Park in my mind right now. <laughs> I can't. I can't. <laughs> I love Sally Struthers. Um, no, no just, but there's <laughs> like theater to me is just so frightening, mm-hmm. and 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 like it's and it's frightening to me to be in the theater, and it's frightening to me to even entertain the idea of being on stage. It's, it's you're afraid to go to the theater. I I don't I I I went and saw I went and saw a funny thing happen on the way to the forum mm-hmm. um, when Nathan Lane was in it mm-hmm. um, up in New York on Broadway and it made you uncomfortable just to be sitting in the audience it it makes me uncomfortable because of that curb your enth- like, and this is not why but this mm-hmm. is this is this is the expo- this would be a good explanation of why I feel that way it's, sure. it's the curb your enthusiasm episode where Larry's doing the producers <laughs> and forgets his line mm-hmm. and then just goes off on this tangent. And, Mm -hmm. you know, Mel Brooks is like, we're done. It's dead. It's finally dead. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And then he picks it up and just crushes it. But but it's those moments like it like they're so uncomfortable that I I, like it just it makes me want to like crawl under it in a a, a hole. Yeah, that's life. But that never that I've never experienced that because there's always a take two in what we do, which is why I actually I'm actually really much more interested right now in film and television because I like the idea of, and by film and television, and my, I mean even like a web series, I, um, I like the idea of reaching a wider audience and documenting a story. Because if you if you really believe your story is worth telling, then I want the totally different discipline, though. I want oh, absolutely. <clears throat> it's a to- um. I'm gonna sound. And I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna sound very pretentious and snooty for a second. Oh. I'm from Do you an make a- magic from an acting perspective. It's <laughs> electrifying. Um, I believe that, and I'm not saying me. I'm just saying in general. I believe theater trained actors. M- meld into film better than the reverse. Okay, so now using using that as the as the mm-hmm. the barometer, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I think if you can if if you can get a theater actor to basically pull it back sixty percent, yes, then you're good. That's what I'm saying, though. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Like, I'm also not a, I'm not a musical theater actor, so I have a like my range is not as you know. I'm Oklahoma. Fal- yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean that because that's the thing is like when theater actors try to like when we try to get them, it's always like this over emoting. It's over here. And, I'm, right. and, and it's very hard to explain it's like it's that. Like they're, they're selling it to the back row. They're selling mm-hmm. it to yeah. You know, you're, you're, mm-hmm. if the camera's three feet from your face, that's where you're selling it. Yeah. No. I no. That's, yeah. Like and 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 in, and in theater, like a whisper, you can't hear. Mm-hmm. In film, a whisper is a whisper. You can hear it. You know. Right. And that's mm-hmm. and that's and it's the subtlety of that mm-hmm. that. That where where it exists, and I saw uh, what was the play you did with Simone, um, uh, where you guys were like these the Darling Core. I loved it. Aww, I thought it was great. That's so sweet. But I don't mind going to see you because I know that mm-hmm. you've you've at least rehearsed or at least tried to. <laughs> you know what well, I mean? You're getting the Connor, Connor show. I know. He, he told you so every time. Unless every time I'm paying. around Connor, it's the Connor show. <laughs> As I, it I always be. feel bad when Connor leaves because I'm like, I feel like I should make a donation. <laughs> Or like a deposit. To what? Yeah, do you have a Venmo? <laughs> to my, oh. Could you entertain oh, me? Oh, that's very sweet. Oh, that's so sweet. So how do you? So how do you me, gravitate? Making me uncomfortable. Look at this. So how do you? you yeah, all He's of a itching. sudden he has hives because I gave him a compliment. <laughs> what? Stop. <laughs> so, how do you? How do you? And you've and and here's the other thing too is like is is that you know. You know, you claim to be like this, this, you know, weird high school kid, which I think we all were. I mean, we, I think we all were. Yeah, but it ended for you. 
Are you sure? I'm wearing a Star Wars shirt. And he's, I, he's almost 40 wearing a Star Wars shirt. <laughs> yeah, like by now I should at least be in pants that no. have like and you own your own business and you're, you're in the industry you want to be in. We wouldn't want you any other way. Lovely, intelligent, um, smart fiance and yeah, but, you're, you're doing good. But, so, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not making that about my fiance. I'm just making it about compliments. I don't like them. Um, but but so when you got the vintage, you 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 harnessed all avenues of art that were being kind of I wouldn't say neglected around here, but just not mm. being as much paid attention to. They and just you need, gave them opportunities. They just needed a hub. They were there. I didn't do anything. They just needed a hub to and a but platform. What, but what, I mean, when you look back on those years, I mean, do you feel? Sure. Uh, how do you feel about those 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 years? I mean, I'm, there's ups and downs, but oh but, yeah, um, good. Wouldn't trade them for anything. Best education I've ever could have had. Best education I could have ever had. There we go. Do, I mean, do you, do you, do you, is there like a sense of pride? Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, what me, Teresa, and a bunch of other people throughout the years created was something really special. And it's something that, you know, there's been those kind of incarnate, those kind of spaces and hubs have been in this area of way before us. There was Test Pattern, there was Proof Rocks, there was. Cathy Met- 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 Metropolis down in Wilkesbury, which was much more music focused, but did it very well. Right. Um, there was Cafe Del Sol. I mean, there's. I mean, and I'm sure I'm forgetting ten more names. Um, and, there, and we kind of were a little different and special. And I don't know if this is a good or bad thing, but there really hasn't been anything like since. it since. No. no, we've been closed now since <clears throat> um, the day we announced we were closing in like early August. It's the anniversary just happened. Uh, was the same day that Robin Williams passed away. And it, was it was the like, same day? Wow. It was the same day the news broke. I mean, I, I don't know if it was the same day, but it was the same day the news broke. And I was at a Starbucks just crying my eyes out. For, for, because both because people were saying such love. I was like, okay, it was sad, but it was okay. We had to post the, new, the notice. We sent out the press release. Um, we still had a few more weeks to go. And then Robin Williams thing came up and then I just lost it. Um, I was at State Street eating brunch. Mm. I don't know why I remember, but like, because I'm hoity now. Bougie, um, <laughs> but I, but I remember like I remember it was with my family, and I remember I remember like it it popped up, and then and then like everyone was silent for like two minutes because someone that brings so much because it, it's so real and it's so genuine, but someone that brought so much joy, it's like we don't want to think about it. It's like oh, no, he's happy. We don't want to think about. I mean that, that, but it's always like the Marcel Marceau thing where it's like you know they're the, the crying clown. The, it's always the brilliant you know comedic geniuses that are because they know where to pull from. That's a that's a really hard place. You have like that's that even that's even beyond method acting. Because you're never, you you're never have, really acting. You don't have the veil of a character, right? Right, right. And I and I always thought I always thought um, comedic actors make the best dramatic actors. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Dramatic yeah. actors that try to do comedy, they can sometimes. Some of the times they do it well because they don't. They are. They have no sense of self awareness. They have no yeah, but, sense but do you, of now. Now, do you agree with me on this? Is that I think I think comedic actors make the best dramatic actors because they've already been made fun of. They've already looked stupid. They don't care. Like, they, yeah, so if a role calls for like, you gotta, you, like, you gotta lose your mind. Like, if you watch Goodwill Hunting, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like, th- there's there's honest funny moments in there, mm-hmm. but it's not Patch Adams. No, you know what I mean. Like, there's no because he, he was real, just playing a person. <clears throat> he was he was he was basically playing a dad, mm-hmm. and he did it well. I don't know if Aww. you ever saw the movie that he he did. I forgot. I forgot uh, Bobcat Goldthwait directed. It's called World's Greatest Dad. I did. How about that? Yeah. I mean, that takes a turn where you're just like, holy shit. Like, he started doing a lot of dark stuff. He directed stuff. that? Who did? Uh, Bobcat Goldthwait? Yeah. I believe so, yeah. Really? Huh. I think he did World's Greatest Dad, and then right after that he did, uh, with one of the Murray brothers, it was about uh, reality TV, and he was going around <laughs> being a vigilante, killing everybody who was on reality TV because he thinks they're ruining America. <laughs> well, that was a turn. <laughs> yeah. So, what, I mean, I mean, you, I mean, you, uh, poets... Artists, yeah. painters, bands, theater. I mean, you di- you you did it all there. A, a Italian touring band that was uh, also included mime. You did that too. We, I mean, we 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 hosted them. Yeah, they were weird. Well, they're Italian. <laughs> Oddly, mimes. oddly enough, that was the weirdest part about it. No, um, <laughs> they're like, uh, hey, can we get the light over there? They barely talked. <laughs> It was so weird. Well, they're well, they're mimes. Mimes. well, I know, but, well, not, but, but not at all. Not at all times. <laughs> at some moment, they had to like. I swear to God, they were just like slinking between walls at one point. 
And it was just I mean that's a weird I mean there's some There's some art to me That's just absolutely strange I I, I got it And I I, I, under- I think mimes a, I think it's hard to do It was just the, It was a wrong It was a bad wrong room They came during like La Festa And we thought like Oh because it was the only Because they're Italian Well because we yeah. they were touring anyway They just wanted to play a place They were they would do it for like A percentage of the door So they're like Okay that's fine It was like a I think it was Monday I think it was like The last day of the festival uh, La Festa Italiana that year And they Like did that And then we did, we kind of Like the day of Said you know what We're not getting A lot of interest We're gonna just make Some flyers And make it free And then just promote To people Because we had <clears> just <throat> started We just moved into Penn Avenue at that point For right. like a month or so And they just went around flyer and we got like a decent crowd and it was just so bizarre. They didn't get paid. They just, they, they like, like we were like still counting the money and we told them like, okay, we're going to, you know, pay you at the end of the night. We have another band that's going to play and they got all their things and then they just like, like they didn't you know, say they, goodbye. They just, they just like, wander, you know, that scene in blues brothers where the nun just like, <laughs> like doesn't actually walk. She just like fades back and the door and the door closes. It was kind of like that. God, I love that movie. So um, how did, so how did, uh, do you want to ask a question? No, yeah, you guys, say, I feel so. Good. I feel so bad. We're leaving you no, out. No, no, no. You're good. Keep no, going. No, this shows this. So sh- the, the subtext of this is sexism. Um, <laughs> Even the room kind of says that. <laughs> Actually, I, don't know I think it's pro-feminism. <laughs> no, it's very harsh lines. So I'm just here just to make women happy. Then I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a calculated. Ploy. Oh, there's a woman here. No, no. We're good. no, the funny story. The, the story about the paint in here <laughs> is that when I lived in Southside, I was going through severe depression. And uh, I was in a terrible band, and I was I was I was very alcoholicy, and um, I decided one day uh, to paint my living room, and it was called Chianti, and I was so messed up that I was like, Hannibal Lecter said that. <laughs> That's the paint I'm going to use, and it was a gloss. And it's this color? No, it was a. Gl- this is a matte. Oh, okay. that was a gloss. gloss. So when anybody walked into my room, it, lo- it, it went, went the, the moment you walk into my into the, into the apartment, it was the living room. And the moment you walk in, it looks like the walls are dripping with blood. <laughs> so, so I remember Joe Van Wee walked in and he goes, uh, he walked in, he goes, oh, do we need to talk about something? <laughs> 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 and I'm like, no, I just really like the color. When I did you it, move into West Side? That, when did I move to West Side? Yeah. <clears throat> With your current 2000, place. late 2010. Oh, okay. November of 2010. Okay. I love his place. I do you too. Call, I love man. it. You gotta call and meet the dog. It. You haven't met the I dog still haven't yet. I met the dog. No, I've been. I haven't been. I haven't been here for. You're a, lot a of terrible time. friend. I'm a terrible <laughs> human being. No, I love his place. It's like Dick I know, Van Dyke midlife crisis. It. We should use it like in something because I just think it's perfect. It's, it's like the Brady Bunch house. Like you walk in and it's just like never occurred cool. to me. I'm like it's oh, Don oh, Draper's get... third family. Fourth. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, fourth. Well, Don Draper's family third have? family. Uh, spoiler alert, everybody. Uh, <laughs> I missed like the well, last. He was a Whitman, first of all. <laughs> yeah, and that was his. Like, if you want to, are that, we not counting them? Or counting was that his California family? No, that was his real name. That was like the like who who he was Dick Whitman. Yeah, but didn't he? Didn't he have a family in California? He, he had no. He or was that like really he was this married? Recap, man. No. Um. The the Don Draper's real wife, the real Don Draper's real wife, Anna, came back, and then they were like, Oh, I missed that. They were legally married. You remember that? That was that was. I missed the last season. This was like season three. I don't remember four. Remember she dies. It was the suitcase. It's like <laughs> considered like the best episode ever made. Somewhere Tim McDermott's like heart is like. No, I was like the carousel. I thought carousel was one of the best episodes. Oh, that's early. Okay. Yeah. Um. No, the uh, the suitcase. I think is one. I mean, it's cliched, but it is one of the best. Yeah, but episodes. he was in Calif. Wasn't he in California at one point? Yeah. With that was where she was, wasn't it? Correct. But they weren't like. I guess you could count that they weren't actually married. They were married in name only because he I, took over her husband's life. Right. He stole, it and she knew. She came in well because she thought hers like my husband was was in Korea and where is he now? And then she found him, and once she found that out, she was like, "Well, you can live. You can live as him." I don't think I, To my interpretation It was just kind of like A sibling It was more of like A two yeah, best friends I don't think friends, it was romantic sibling. No But um, he really respected her Yes Because she was one of the few people That knew who he really was Yeah And like she She basically gave Because she could have like Blown, blown his cover Blown the whistle Yeah, yeah. Um, No and Then he married Betty And then he divorced Betty And then he married Megan And then he divorced Megan And That's we never right. saw And we never saw anybody uh, After Megan He's just you know Did you, you never saw the last season? Mm-mm. Oh wow that's weird. That was such a good season. All right, well, I'll get to We're it. gonna cut all of this, right? This is so boring. No, this is all staying. Um, so, how, so, so, so boring. So, at, at what at what <clears throat> coffee shop delusional thing that you do are you like? We should do a fringe festival. I was. Because uh, usually you have like these pie in the sky, mm-hmm. and then you make it a reality, mm-hmm. which is was, that's that's one of the most amazing things about you, as I as, uh-huh. if I can say as a friend, because whatever. 
There's that motivational poster that whatever the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. Connor is the embodiment of that. I'm, it's usually that's like, awesome. Where it's that's usually so like, sweet. I want to make, I want to make cars that the tires heat up so no one ever has to worry about getting stuck. And then I'm like, <laughs> I'm gonna go to bed now. No, I'm just a big, I'm just a big believer, and you can, you know, dream up whatever you want, except if it's love. <laughs> Wait, 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 was it in the script to turn, to break the fourth wall to look at the camera? <laughs> All right, do it, wait, say it one more time, more time and then do it again, ready? Okay, right. Wait, wait, hold on. Wait, wait, give me direction, give me some direction. All right, so the moment. Yeah. Um, you, you, what was the line that you had? Uh, you can dream up anything you want except if it's love. Okay, but you, you, okay, so, 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 after you say you can dream up anything you want, mm -hmm. you need to take a pause. Sure. Because you're realizing there's one thing that you can't. This right, is ready? so stupid. Okay. Right, ready? And action. Yeah, you, I'm a big believer in you can um, you can just dream up anything you want. You know, except if it's um, love. And scene. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid and dumb. So where did the fringe come from? Okay, so I had done a couple of fringes with some folks around the country. Uh, I was floating on a riverbed <clears throat> in Kansas City, Missouri. It was yeah, wait. <laughs> Good segue. Not something you bypass. <laughs> floating on a riverbed river in Kansas, Kansas City, City, Missouri. Or right outside of Kansas City. Uh, me, what, does, what does floating on a riverbed that's mean? That's a country song. That's we're, going to be a country song. Floating on a riverbed in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, <laughs> as we say in Missouri, I ain't going back to Missouri. Yeah. Um, Funny how there's an A in that name. <laughs> uh I had brought a play out there that Simone had directed. She couldn't come with us, unfortunately, but I had brought a play out there with myself, Joe O'Connor, Chantel Mitchell, Jess McDonough, and Casey Thomas. Yes, that was everyone. I felt really bad if I forgot someone. Yeah, your um, Oscar speech is going to be really nervous. <laughs> um, I just want to say, uh, none of you helped. <laughs> um, no. It was all me. It was all me. <laughs> Who's best actor of Scranton High Class of 2010 now? <laughs> um, still not me. Okay. <laughs> we can't retroactively change that. All right. That, you get an honorary. You gotta get. Gotta no, get an honorary. I was like, no, I was barely. I barely graduated. Um, <laughs> not that I did bad in school. I was like in all honors and AP classes. I just like my senior year. Like I just did not show up. I would. Ha I would call. Spoiler alert, Trent. I, I would call. Uh, yeah, I think they have bigger problems to worry about right have, now. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're fine. I'm pretty sure you're not gonna eight years later retroactively take away my high Diploma. school diploma. <laughs> Um, now you gotta get your ged. I didn't go to college, so <laughs> what do you didn't help? Didn't help. <laughs> no, um, no, it was, of course not. Um, <laughs> what was I gonna say? Uh, segue. I, I, you can cut all of this. No, we're not. Um, the we haven't talked about the festival at all. Um, there. Okay, um, where are you going? I'm gonna check something. All right, he's checking something. So Keep talking. <laughs> I would um, have people call in for me. I'm not gonna say who, but I'd have people call in for me to get me out of class, like by like, because I think the day counted after like. The third period, maybe second period. I don't remember. It was you like a full credit then. Mm -hmm. There was like a full. I mean, I'd still miss those other classes, but like I wouldn't have the day count against me. Mm -hmm. And I swear to God, I'd just be sitting in like English lit, like with like a Starbucks and my sunglasses on. You're like Tom Cruise in Risky Business. <laughs> just, wait, just waiting for Connor. Are you going somewhere? <clears throat> maybe the phone would ring. Gotta go. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's me. Okay, they're letting me go. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> I have a meeting at twelve at City Hall. Um, was that, is that something that you would leave for? Yeah, all the time. So you'd be truant. <laughs> I mean, my accountant. <laughs> Had alimony to pay. No. Um, <laughs> alimony. <laughs> no, um, I was done with high school by junior year, um, which is a shame, which is stupid. I look back on that and I wish I had, I wish I had cared less emotionally, but put in like one tenth more energy because I could have graduated with a much better GPA. I say that, probably not, but. You didn't go to college. It doesn't matter. No, I know, but I, but it, um, I was going to. That was a last, that was not a last minute, but I got into a couple of schools that I wanted to go to. And then it was like, mm, no, I don't want to be saddled with debt. Because what I wanted to go Where'd for. Where'd you get into McCann? <laughs> what did what'd you do? Open the door. Um, uh, we no, welcome I got, everyone. No, I applied to some local places. I didn't really get into, I didn't really go for drama and I didn't really get into and a couple that I did. Because well, you are. Um, <laughs> did my hair just stay up on it? Um, no, it I, I got into up. Columbia. Oh, was, oh that's, like my, that's amazing. I didn't, yeah. I didn't go. Why? I didn't want to be saddled with debt for the rest of my life. But, but sometimes being idea. good enough and knowing you're good enough is good enough. I'm not going to lie. It, that, that, that I've coasted on that for quite some time. <laughs> <laughs> I got into Columbia. How did it go? I didn't, I didn't go. It's, I, almost, it's almost like punk rock to be like, I got into Harvard, but 
fuck them. Yeah, fuck fuck no, yeah. no, 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 don't. No, I love Columbus. No, I, I, I don't regret not going. One of my dreams is that like I'm going to become so fabulously wealthy one day that I can just go like, I can be like James Franco and just go collect degrees like Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he does, right? That's his thing now. He just swintily eyed gets degrees. I don't college. know. He's a whatever. I met him. And? He was nice. Oh, okay. I was on that. I was, I had a. I was on that little show, The Deuce. Oh, were you on The Deuce? For, nice. For 30 seconds. Are you, are, you going, are, you going to, are you going back on? No. Did you, I mean. I had a, I, I did have a speaking part, but I have not watched the episode. I don't think it's included in it. What was your line? What was the line? It was like, I was shouting like in a group. It's like 1970s gay nightclub. And it was like. It was, no, no, we won't that go. Was amazing. Basic, I was basically background. I was glorified background. So you just, <laughs> you, your line was with a group. It was like. No, you can't do that. <laughs> At one point on set, someone who like the wrangler for the background people had to come over to some group of people and be like, you need to be a little less gay. You need to be less gay. <laughs> they didn't tell me that. Thing. That wasn't me. But no, because they're like, it's the 70s. Mm-hmm. They, were, they were just, it was more, not so much not being gay. I shouldn't say that. It was more that it was being anachronistic. Is that how you pronounce that word? Anachronistic? Anachronistic. Yeah. Anachronistic. They were being, they were like saying, they were like shouting, you know, gay anthems that they were like, that didn't exist. So, oh, so, oh, so 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 it's. I shouldn't not, say it wasn't about being gay. It was being as gay as you want in 1970s, you know, Times Square nightclub. But the words but, that the but the chants and anthems they were Yas using were not. Was not a thing. Oh yeah, yes, yeah. <laughs> didn't so, come which, in yet. Yeah, they were like, okay, that's, you know, that, that's 2012. Right. They were, which is, I mean, again, they liked the energy, but it was, you know, just, just <laughs> stick with stick with the period. Just, you know, yeah. let's, let's, we're doing a period piece here. Yeah, <laughs> Maggie Gyllenhaal is going to kill you. So what? Ha- <laughs> so okay, Fringe, dude. Cool. So I was doing the Kansas City Fringe. In Missouri, which is actually huge. Like, they're in their 12th... My God, no, by now they must be in their 13th, 14th year. Something like that. Um, at the time, it was the 11th. Uh, it was right before the vintage decided to close. We were kind of discussing it at the time. Um, and we were just all chilling out. It was like, yeah, do you think a fringe would do well in Scranton? And we were all talking about just shooting the shit. And it was like, well, you would need blah, 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 blah. Yeah, we have that. Well, you also need... Blah, 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 blah. Like, it was like, you know, it needs to be walkable. Okay, we need venues. Yeah. It was just a, like the checklist out of like 10 things, we had nine and a half. Um, what was the one thing you didn't have? Money. <laughs> um, so I, when I came back and we wrapped up the vintage, I put out like a call. And Liz might, t- Liz might tell you a different story, and that's fair. I remember it is that I put out a call uh, say, asking for multiple people to show up. And it only Liz showed up. She claims I told her there was definitely people coming. I don't remember it that way. Um, but I mean, she, to, to just get like, a, like almost a board together? Kind of like a... Search committee, whatever you want to call it, like yeah, like an auxiliary. Yes. Yeah. Um. So Liz and I just met Liz Bowen, and we um sat down and we talked about it, and she was like, "Yeah, I'll help out." And then <laughs> she became the co-founder, and she's our managing director, and um we're entering our fourth year. And what it's was com- it like? To, what, what, I mean, what was it like to like? There's a lot of people that think like in our world, like what we do, it's like I dream a genie. Like you do, you do the the arms cross, and then you bow oh, your no, head, and like shit a, I mean, happens. We, I mean, we can. We met, I think, like September, early October of twenty, which means like you're 14, a year away. Fourteen, yeah. And then we had it up and running. I mean, a year later, it took a year. I mean, we planned it for the following September. It took a whole year. I mean, is that daunting to be like, you know, yeah. twelve months from now we're gonna we're gonna do a thing yeah. over a couple of days and super daunting. Uh, hopefully, it doesn't. I mean, it was super daunting, but I would say that <clears throat> I wouldn't have pushed it any further because it would have reached a point where it was just like, all right, we picked the dates very strategically. It was like the first weekend in October, I think, at the time. Um, uh, we picked them because the, we we did research in the, like the, all the fringe festivals in the United States and major like major major ones. The only one we compete with directly, like directly compete with, is. Um, Melbourne, Australia, and we determined like we'll be fine. Um, even though like, I sh- is it the same time, it's around the same time, <clears throat> but I mean, totally different demographics. And I mean, there's only so many. I mean, we no matter what we do, we'd be competing with something. There's over 200 fringes worldwide, right? Um, but and then we also there used to be that Pages and Places festival. I don't remember that. Uh, um, Sounds familiar, but I Liz don't Randall know. was involved in it. It was really cool. It was like yeah. literature. They had they brought um what's his face. Hitchens. Chris, Hitchens, Christopher Hitchens. They brought him in before <coughs> yeah, he passed Liz away. Yeah, loved Hitchens. He, I'm a, I loved Hitchens. Yeah. Um, that was another one that actually made me tear up a little bit. Um, there's only been like four celebrities that have done that to me. Um, I'm one. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, so we kind of felt like, oh, there's kind of a cultural, that, that had gone on hiatus. I mean, and I, think you, I mean, what were you expecting? Whatever. We really had, I mean, like the, 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 we went into it 
with setting certain standards, and I think we met most of them, and those that we didn't, we continued to work on. There was really no. We had about two and a half thousand attend the first year, uh-huh. and we that's, had that's, that's impressive. That's impressive. We had yeah. no concept. It was like there there could be five hundred, there might be ten thousand. We had absolutely no. We just kept hitting the pavement. I think we've not. I think we've lost some of that original spark and like eagerness, but yeah. I think we've substituted it with um, intelligence. Like I, th- I think that we're we can work smarter, not harder kind of thing. Right. So I sometimes have to give myself a check. Like I'll, every day this month I've been waking up feeling like, oh, I feel like I'm not doing as much as I've done before. Like, I feel like I need to be, hu- I, I don't feel like I've lost the hustle. And then I sit down and I actually look at it and I go, no, I'm just not being, I'm just, I'm just not killing myself. Yeah. Like I'm getting, everything's done that needs to be done. Correct. And I'm actually getting more. We've never had this much exposure. We've never had this much PR for lots of reasons. We've never had, um, you know, we have 12,000 copies of this guide. You know what I mean? That are still being distributed, and they have been, and have been distributed since uh, the beginning of August. Could being that you have four thousand yeah, of them, can I have one? I've yeah. seen yeah. them everywhere. Thank you. Okay, so I have a dumb question, and no, it could please. be dumb. So, with these French festivals, since they're all over Egg the place, or the chicken. <laughs> um, do you guys all like support each other and go to each other? That's is not that- a dumb question at all. Um, in a way, there's uh, in the United States, there's there's a the it's called USAF, the United States Association of Fringe Festivals. They meet every year in like mid November. So mm-hmm. we're going to be going. It's being held in Rochester this year. Rochester Fringe is enormous. I don't know who they thanked in a previous life. They have <laughs> so much money. Um, and they do, and they run an inte- incredibly good ship. Um, there's all, we actually just came from Edinburgh, Scotland, mm-hmm. uh, where we attended every two years. They have the International World Conquer- Congress of World of Fringes around Conquerors. the world. Conquerors. Uh, Fringe it's World. All, it's, all, it's, all, it's all creative Vikings. <laughs> <clears throat> that sounds hot. Um, but they, they, uh, I don't know. It sounds like a weird time. Um, no, but they, uh, so yeah, we do, we're, we're not like directly, like we don't answer to each other in that mm-hmm. sense, but we do support each other. There's also the Canadian Association of Fringe Festivals that we, we're not members of because, uh, for various reasons, but. Cause, cause fuck the Canadians. <laughs> no, because no, honest to God, it's because their standards are too, we can't meet them. They are, are they too? Are they too strict or stringent? They're, they're too or? strict. I mean, no, 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 no. Let me say they're not too strict. First of all, Canada has a lot more cultural arts and culture funding, so they have certain benefits. Um, they operate under a very strict model where to be a member of CAF, your festival, you can't even. I don't think you can even call yourself a fringe in Canada unless you've met their standards. They haven't like trademarked in Canada. Right. The only U.S. festivals that are belong to CAF as like sister members are like Orlando, I think San Diego. <sighs> Chicago might I can't don't quote me on that I'm not sure they have a system where you have to give 100% of your box office back to your artist really so do your sponsorships here's pay the trend, for the- uh, here's a little trick there <clears throat> here's a little, little loophole um, they charge much higher production fees to the artists so you're paying up front and then you get 100% of your box office back that's negating you know we we charge very we don't charge any application fees there's no cost to apply we charge very modest production fees and then we give 70% back so, like, we can't survive without that 30%. Um, so, you're covering your overhead and your employment. Barely. I mean, I mean, without grants and I mean, how sponsorship. Much, but how much, I mean, so, like, just to give perspective, like, yeah. how, how, much, how much work goes into this that you don't see a nickel of? I mean, we, I mean, do, your, we do receive stipends. We do receive stipends. I'm not, I'm not going to yeah, claim you're, poverty, but you're, not, but, but, you're, but you're not like, oh, no, we, no, we're, I'm not we're crushing it. 70K on the, no, yeah. Oh, my God. Not even close. Not even close. Um... We're crushing twelve hundred dollars on the. <laughs> <laughs> it's no, it's it's a it's it's I mean, I, I, mostly I, I, a labor I, I, of love. Yeah, it's I know. I, I, I just don't think it's proportionally. No, not even compensatory. Close. Not even close. I probably work for like <clears throat> three cents an hour if you if you took my year into consideration. I mean, you're I mean, you're saying that with l- very little sarcasm. No, like I'm being dead. I've never sat down and done that math, but it's I mean, because also I work from home sometimes. It's I'm right. on the road. We travel for work. Um, you know, uh, but yeah, no, it's a lot. Next year, we really want to fix that. So we're, we we have a this year we had a really awesome development committee that did help us increase our fundraising, which was awesome. But we're really trying to step that up, like quad, like it really like next year's our fifth year. So if it's going to something big, if mm-hmm. it's going to continue, and I don't say that to be negative or that we have any intention of stopping, we just always have to fight the Walmart mentality, which is oh, it's always been there, it's always going to be there. No, we can easily go away. I don't mean that like I'm not saying that like threatening, like we don't want to. It just it can well, happen. Well, I always have yeah. that. I always have that saying that like all artists are two weeks from poverty. You know, so Correct. like so like mm-hmm. even even artistic endeavors are always, you know, if if this one 
takes a shit, then then we're done. Then you're yeah. done. Mm-hmm. Then we're done. Um, <clears throat> and that's why people need to come out and support it. Yes, so. correct. And it's also I I, I you know uh, we constantly fight this. We constantly are asked answering the question, "What is it?" Which is fine. We were told by that festivals. was my next question. So mm-hmm. for the fe- layman, so the blue collar man, I'm going to give a really quick history lesson, and I apologize in advance. Yeah, so, I love history though. I do too. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Lovely. That was lovely. Um, uh, I'm looking down at my pants. <laughs> um, so, 1947 in Great Britain, they were trying to sort of reunite their culture and society after World War II. So they decide the powers that be, whoever they may be, decided to have an international festival of music and drama. They chose Edinburgh, Scotland, because it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It's, you know, sprawling and it's gorgeous and gothic and historic. And also it had been virtually untouched, relatively untouched by the bombings. Whereas From London... World War II? Yeah. This is 1947. Okay. Yeah. This is whereas London is still, you know... Like at, 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 at the time, <laughs> London was under major repairs. Mm-hmm. Um, so... Uh, they, they had it there. It was curated. They had from all over Europe, you know, dance, opera, theater, you know, you know, Renaissance art, you blah, 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 whatever you name it, at the, inter, at the Edinburgh International Festival of Music and Drama. Eight companies, eight theatrical performing art companies, two from England, six from Scotland, who were not permitted access, like they tried to get in, or they may have, some may have tried, some may not have tried, typically because they were, weren't well known, they were too small. Maybe they were amateur or too avant-garde, whatever the reason was, and they decided, well, fuck it. And when I say they decided individually, they were not a collective. Like this theoretically, I think, might have happened all independent of each other. They were like, well, the city's going to be packed. The hotels are going to be packed. We know where the venues are for the the big festival. There's going to be lines around the block for like the half hour before every performance, every evening. Let's just do it. So they all like rented their own like YMCA's or like church halls or little pubs that had like stages in the back, whatever those eight companies did. Um, you can actually go online and learn more about those original eight companies, what shows they did, where they did them. It's really interesting. Um, and they just flyered and did they, they booked their own <coughs> venues, had to get their own lights, if whatever that would look like. This is in the late 40s. Like. This is 1947. Um, and then a year later, they <coughs> you know they did it again, and others kind of took note of that. A journalist player and a Scottish playwright by the name of Robert Kemp coined the term. There's a lot of independent enterprise happening around the fringe of the festival, because at the time, I think original, for the first year or two, it was just known as the adjunct festival, because it wasn't the curated festival, it was just people doing their own thing. And then the, the word fringe kind of stuck. And then in the mid fifty, so it keeps, it happens again, happens again, happens again. In the mid-50s, the, the Edinburgh Fringe Festival Society forms its own nonprofit to create, like, a centralized hub for marketing and support. It still does not believe in curation. They don't it's, you know, you go, you sub- I, I could talk through the whole process, but it's kind of boring. Um, but basically, so flash forward to today, they just celebrated their 71st Fringe Festival. It is the largest arts event in the recorded history of mankind. It's not even just... It's mankind. Wow. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> that was like awesome. 4 million tickets this year, I think, or something ridiculous. Wow. And like 4,000. I know, I know it's about 4,000 shows. And that's just, that's not even <laughs> counting... Um, I'm going to live you for a second. If okay, that's sure. Okay. That's fine. Um, yeah, it's like 4,000 shows at the Edinburgh Fringe, and I don't think that's even all-inclusive. I think there's some wow. that, like pop-ups they don't miss. You can just go and find a street corner and start doing your own thing. Um, you know, you can, I mean, I recommend if you're going to go in and make that investment, especially coming from here, you should get in the massive guide, which is like, I should have brought it. It's like this thick. Um, you should work with a decent venue. You should, you know, be promoting. It's a really expensive endeavor. You're probably going to lose money, but it's for your career. It's really helpful. Can I ask you, being that it was what it was in 1947, correct? Was that kind of seen of as a as a unifying thing for the country that maybe it needed? It needed a respite from years of war. Well, yeah, or? and I think it also was a, uh, an example of the talent that had was there because that could again like I said like you know our foundation while we do bring in artists from literally this year we can honestly say we're international we have artists from all over the world um, at least one or two international acts the bedrock foundation of our festival and likewise theirs I'm sure originally had to be the regional based talent so like I said those were and also it's interesting to see that dichotomy of those eight six were Scottish so in the sense that I think there, after World War II, there was this massive d- n- hunger, not only from the public, but from artists to create and to demonstrate. So I think it was kind of just a, we have to do this. There was kind of that culture meets commerce, that entrepreneurial spirit. Like, I, it's not just that. And again, I mean, they we did Dunkirk. We better, <laughs> we might as well do the art. <laughs> well, what are we fighting for? Do you know what I mean? There's that yeah, kind of, and, uh, which, which is a great point. That's, you know, that mentality of, you know, we went through all of this. 
God, let's have some theater. And I'm sure some, I mean, and also, I mean, you, war affects arts and culture. It affects a generation. It affects, mm-hmm. and it affects every generation differently. There's the generation that fought in it. There's the generation that were at home waiting for their children to come back. There's the generation that were too young to fight and grew up in war era mentality. There's the generation that's bo- the baby boomers that were born as a result of that war. Um, so yeah, I mean, absolutely po- politics, you know, war, life, major natural disasters, major life event. Of course it influences art. So, I mean, when you, when you go back and look at the history of, of fringe festivals, mm-hmm. it came out of war, war. Mm-hmm. I mean, is that is that safe to say is like a byproduct of that war? Sure. Was, I, I think some that, people would argue. I don't think it's the, the cause. No, but I no, but absolutely. Well, I mean. That, like I said, that that if you the domino effect, that international festival, which still runs to this day, by the way, they run concurrently. Right. Um, and it's the whole month of August in Scotland, um, Edinburgh specifically. Um, uh, I had a point and it lost. Oh, well, what? Okay, keep going. No, no, I was gonna say that. Um, eh, forget it. Must have been a lie. But at, <laughs> at at the fringe, what was the criteria for getting into it? At the Edinburgh fringe? Yeah. None. There's no criteria. There is I mean, no so, criteria. I mean, but okay, so so the, the difference being, I should clarify, they don't. What we do because we're on a smaller scale, obviously, they don't like manage their venues. The Edinburgh Fringe Society is just a service provider, kind of. They're there to facilitate conversations, to provide marketing support. They publish the guide. They're there to but, answer but, questions. But I mean, if there was, if there was, if there was, uh, uh, I, would, I, own, I wouldn't say you, t- you own a venue in Edinburgh, Scotland. I, as an artist, have to get secure my contract with you. And you can obviously curate, and you can obviously book me. Well, my my point that I'm getting at is is yeah. is is that you know it, it at the time. I mean, what, sure. I mean, and and there's a, there's a liberalism in in Europe at this time, right? Because uh, I mean, we're, we're we're trying to get away from fascism, sure. So the point is, is that you know, especially artists at that time, I bet they, I bet you they were pushing the norms and and pushing yes. societal yes, uh, uh, in their way, yes. You know, so like, you know, I, I I don't know if at the time in Europe, you know, gay was weird, but I'm sure there was a gay play um, or LG, I don't know necessarily in the there first was gay year characters in Shakespeare. Wasn't yeah, there, there oh, was. Of course. Yeah. I don't know necessarily in the first year or two. You'd have to. I'm not a historian. and There's actually a fringe historian I could recommend to you. But I, but I don't see them censoring unless it was like, OK, well, now we're going to bring all these cats up um, and slit their throats and no, call it art. No. Yeah. No. I. I. I'm going to say probably not, but I also don't want to minimize. I mean, LGBT in Europe is still so different than here. It's 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 weird. It's different and it's weird. Um, it's more understood to exist. It's not like provincial America. You know, I mean, remember, we are founded by Puritans. We were founded by people who were who thought that Europe was too liberal. Right. We're trying to get away from that. <clears throat> um, but it's uh, under the guise of fleeing religious persecution. Isn't that interesting? Yes. Isn't that interesting how we're all. Coming yeah. back around. A little weird. A little weird. Uh, a little scary. History has taught us nothing. <laughs> um, no, not at all. Um, Go to Books a Million and buy a history book. <laughs> <laughs> or a library. Or a library. There's a yes. great library right down the street, the Albright Library. Do mm-hmm. it. Um, they just remodeled. But yes, I, I, I would say that the purpose of Fringe is to provide an open platform for any kind of conversation. I'm not exactly sure what those original conversations were. Um, but some of it is is provocative to be provocative because it it does it does initiate a conversation correct. and it does mm-hmm. correct it does take social norms and social taboos and 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 not make excuses for them but at least start a conversation about them. You and know, it's more accepted to go and see because it's like a performance as opposed to like you know having an actual conversation living, living, or yeah, living, seeing how drag queens actually perform. Like it's like oh well you know I wouldn't go to a bar to see them, but this is a bigger platform that's acceptable and you know it, it gives, gives a vo- tolerance. Yes, yes, yeah, sure, sure. I'm not going to give us a gold star like we're reshaping the world. <laughs> no, but no, no, it's, no, no, no. But I'm saying, but like even at the time, like it's 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 sure. It's like you you, you guys take like I nor- think you'd have to go a little further into their history, further deep in. I'm, I'm assuming there probably weren't. But I'm but I'm going to I'm using that because I'm I, I'm saying that because I feel like you have a point. I'm getting I'm <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm Hemingway my way <laughs> there. Um, Disgusting. What are you two like? A, is there a neural link that I'm not aware of? He's my brother. Are the headphones connected? <laughs> we're having like we're, there's someone in another room like feeding some, us. Is this like some strange? Yeah, he has no idea where that is. This came like from some either. strange like '80s Dennis Quaid sci-fi movie no, going it's, it's on Bravo. here. <laughs> oh Jesus! I do like Andy Cohen. Um, Go ahead. But 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 one of and that's and that's what you guys like. You don't censor. 
No. No. Unless it's unless it's like, you know, like I said, like we're going to put we all these not, cats up here and we're we going to sacrifice not, them as art. Um we've never had that uh submitted. We've had to we've had to reject but we do cur- we do curate the festival primarily for just space and time. We had to reject so many people this year. We had to decline so many people this year. We didn't reject them. We just couldn't fit them all. Um, and we're not at the point yet where we feel comfortable opening up the <clears> festival <throat> to bring your own venue system, which is like here's the here's like almost like think like a first Friday, like here's the footprint. Yeah. You just need to secure your venue and provide proof of that and then we'll put you in the guide. And like there's that takes a you, whole, you do that work for them though, don't you? We provide all the venues, we yeah. provide most of the tech that they need, we provide the marketing support. We do stress to them you have to market your own show and you will always see it. The shows that do really, really great are the ones that took their own initiative and marketed and really put thought and it's and it's not exclusive to local or regional or uh, touring. And then you'll see the shows that kind of just showed up and thought that, well, you're gonna provide my audience for us. And you'll get some people, but you're competing yeah, with but 50 it's, other but shows. It's, but it's like, it's like, and, and this, this goes back to like, you know, Stacy knows that I have this saying where they go, I go, I fucking hate artists. Um, <laughs> those are, I, those are rare. I'll, I will say, and, and, like, but, but, but they, I, I, I say that because in, you know, in my experience and, and the thing is, is when I say that it's not, I'm, I'm not without sin casting stones. <laughs> Obviously. I've done it too. I, there's downright times where I'm, I, I'm self-loathing because, you know, I, I didn't think about money sure. or I didn't think about like, but there was something eye opening that was said to me. Somebody said to me, um, I was at a, 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 a function and they said, what do you, what do you think, uh, uh, artists talk about in New York? And I said, well, That's they, they question. talk about art and life. And, and he's and- like, he's like, no, they talk about how they're going to get their pieces out there, how they're going to get mm-hmm. the world to understand mm-hmm. what they're talking about, how they can get a venue to show their work. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, they talk about all that other shit. It's a business. Too, yeah. But mm-hmm. it's a business. It's a business. Yeah. And there's a lot of people who don't think that like what we do mm-hmm. is they think, they think it's fantasy and play and, and, and Oh, Oh, look at they're over there having some fun. Let live them your, do then live your life as a consumer without it and see how that goes. Yeah. And that's, and, and, that's, and, my and, that's one. And, and that's why, you know, like I try to bring up the fact that like, you know, what, what, what you do, what every performer that goes there. Do we make magic? Yeah, you do. <laughs> sure. You actually, turning nothing into something is, is magic. magic. It's alchemy. No, it's not. That's the combination of other uh, chemicals, isn't it? Unless you have a philosopher's stone in which you can create something from nothing. Okay. That's also considered alchemy. All right. The, 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 all right. The religion of J.K. Rowling. <laughs> um, and, 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 but, 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 but I, 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 I and I keep saying this because it, it it the 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 illusion that like what we do is easy really bothers me, mm-hmm. and the illusion that like we're an unnecessary thing because anybody can oh, do that's it. That's interesting. See, I you're absolutely right. My frustrations, if you had to, if I had to like rip them out of my chest right now, my deepest it's also where I am right now. My deepest frustrations um, as an administrator, I can't speak as an actor, but as an arts administrator. Are not the public at large. It's the act. It's actually artists themselves. Yeah, and I mean because um, because there's a lot that's expected. Like they want to. Like I did all this work for this show. I don't want to do any more. Well, and it's and it's and I'm and I'm, I'm most, that's why I'm saying like the, the, most are lovely, most yeah. are phenomenal, and I'm 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 not just pulling that out of my ass. Most are really great, and I'm. For the record, I don't hate artists, but I say no, that no, thing no, as a way to exaggerate a point of. Um, I think reality that sometimes, doesn't exist sometimes I in the world. I think that sometimes just as much as. Humans are humans, no matter what their field, if they're artists or not artists. Yeah. Um, and I think everyone, to an extent, is, whether they want to admit it or not. I think everybody is, even a plumber. Sure, of course. That's yeah, an art form. That's, that's an art form. Anything Absolutely. that's not, if you're not a robot, that's an art. That's art. That's, yeah. Even that, you could do an But even like a trade. Like somebody, mm-hmm. somebody who, you know, somebody, oh, I just designed this new engine. That's fucking that's art, art. Yeah, man. it's design. Mm-hmm. That's, Absolutely. Yeah. That is something that was not, did you follow an exact schematic? If you deviated from one thing, like if, if then it's art. art. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, we could. We could sit here and say that, but you know, I truly, I truly believe I that, believe from, that from, the from the blue collar, from the blue collar all of the course, way down. Of course. Anybody who creates something out of nothing, even if they're following a blueprint, yeah, you know, that's. Yeah. I mean, Jesus Christ, like you know, artists today he went to carpenter. art school. Yeah, Jesus he was. He was <laughs> making cribs for himself. It was weird. <laughs> um. So, but I'm, I'm, and I'm using, I'm using the fact that people, people misunderstand like what goes into these, what they're about. To kind of kind of navigate ourselves towards the, um, you guys you guys had you're on your you're on your fourth year right or, now. This is our fourth year, yeah. So you had two years without incident, in essence. Oh God! All right, I know you're heading now. I have to. Okay, I that's have fine. to because that's because fine. because I, I we because actually I, had three years. 
because that happened <clears throat> that happened this year. So or really early, really mm-hmm. early this year. But yeah. So I I don't want to. I mean anybody anybody who wants to read between the lines about what the next part of what we're going to talk about. I'll can I'll, I'll talk about facts. That's fine. I, well, I I don't know if we. Okay, <laughs> so there's a certain there's a certain. Um, I'll tell you what, man. I saw. I I I told a. I you told, didn't Google I, all of this. Yeah, but by I, told way, a, this I, mm-hmm. I told a politician a couple weeks ago. I said, uh, "Oh, it was for the Soma thing." Mm-hmm. Um, Sona. Sona. Yeah, yeah. Soma is a pump smashing pumpkin song. <laughs> <laughs> and a muscle relaxer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is it? Soma. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I was telling somebody about Soma, and they passed out. Um, so Sona, the the the. Is, is a group that's trying to have the Music Modernization Act to kind of get like the royalties and everything up to today's standards and not have Spotify and all that shit take advantage mm-hmm. of you. Songwriters in North America. Um, <clears throat> interesting. So I was, I was, I was, fuck, I lost my train of thought. You were um, talking to the politician about Sona. Yeah, but I forget, I forget what I said. What was I, what was I on the track of? With the MMA Act. Fuck. Anyways. And, okay. Mm-hmm. Just say it, whatever. Yeah, we were, we were going to talk about the incident. I'm trying and to. Then... Well, I'm trying to, and, and I'm trying to under. So, so there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of people who 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 <laughs> try to. I'm, look, I'm trying to be delicate here. He like, turns I'm into really, Mixmaster Marky, and he's like, I challenge corruption. I, I I'm challenge. Sorry, I start laughing. I challenge any local beat maker. <laughs> to yes, somehow yes, please yes send us your my Facebook, hops. Facebook that if you want to hashtag Me. that we're and, throwing down at the McDonald's on Kaiser Avenue yeah, I will bring give your cassette you, tapes I will give you the audio files for free if you want them just let me know um but I was going to the larger point of 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 of, of misunderstanding and sure. and 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 you know not digging deep into the issues that people are gonna kind of stand behind Sure. To, 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 to totally understand them. So there's a certain county commissioner that made uh, claims against your festival, and those claims were? <laughs> so early in the year, earlier in the year, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, early 2018. Early 2018, when the budget was up for final review. Or right. no, it had to have been. Was it before? Was it like December? Was it like December? Might have been. I know it was cold. It was really cold out. <laughs> That's all I remember. All right, Stacey, no, so we I narrowed it down to six months. Because <laughs> I know that it's whenever the budget, like the arts and cl- so It was discussion prior to so approval. Scranton, so the Scranton Fringe Festival, we are primarily funded by private corporate sponsorships, to be honest. We, we are getting better with grants and foundations, but funding is limited. So we received, uh, this is the third year we received the grant, which we did receive the grant. I want to be clear. Um, we applied for a Lackawanna County Arts and Culture Project Grant, and then actually this next upcoming for 2019 will be eligible to maybe jump from project to program stream which means a couple of things but also means a little bit more money might be available right um so we were uh the art we, we submitted our materials as we do every year we were present we were nominated by the arts and culture department and their arts and culture team based on judging and blah 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 it was for our uh, programming at the children's library and also some programming we did at the time with uh, Where's the Children's the Library? Ever, That's at all. Lackawanna County Children's Library. It's right next door. The oh, one, no, the oh, one the you just promoted. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. It used to be, you just used to be a Christian it. Science <laughs> Church. It's beautiful. And the, the staff there are wonderful. Um, and we were uh, up for $2,400 out of a tax that I think is like $1.2 million total. Right. So of that pot, we're getting like whatever. Point zero zero zero. I'm not a mathematician. Yeah. Whatever the percentage mm-hmm. is. Um, so it has to go to review before, like any budget before the, the county commissioners, which there are three. Uh all three commissioners voted 100% in favor or at least approved all the other funding, you know, from the big organizations down. Um, in that 1.2? I, I really don't want to be quoting numbers. I think so, yeah. Well, that also well, in co- that, that total that, number. That, counts, that helps. I think that pays for staff, though, too. I think that pays for their two staff members in that department. I, I could be wrong. Yeah, so there could be salaries, but it's all it's all the arts and culture. Arts, correct. That, right. that, that tax, I believe, is about one point, somewhere between 1.2 and 1.5. And there's and there's people who collect money there in sums as large as, oh, um, the big anchor institutions a, a lot. I'm not gonna. I, I don't. I don't. I mean, but it's but it's nowhere near twenty four hundred dollars. No, no, no. It's much more. But they're also much bigger institutions. Right. And I, and I understand that. Um, and I think the tax is phenomenal, and it costs the taxpayer so little. And I'm a huge proponent of it. So that's just my two cents. So um, let me. Can I can I ask you a, a, yeah. a financial question? Sure. So so that twenty four hundred dollars yeah. helps helps you guys with your operating costs and putting and putting the. It helps with that program specifically for the children's library. Correct. 
for, mm-hmm. to, to put on free programming for children and their families. Okay. Pay artists, marketing materials, some minor tech that we if and we you need do to that through file. the fringe, right? So the it's fringe, part of the fringe series. Yeah, so it's yeah. part mm-hmm. of the fringe series. Yeah, so it's like called fringes, our, it's called our early stages program. <clears throat> but it would like it would be like you know it if, happens during the festival. It's just like any other venue. It's just free. But the but mm-hmm. but the fringe is the reason it happens. Correct. Okay. Correct. So do you, so if you look at the totality, we program it, we promote right. it. So if you look at the totality of um, the fringe festival, mm-hmm. uh, how much? How much? Uh, just a shot in the dark, and I know you're not going to know this. How does? How much money does that bring into the community in oh. that weekend? Uh, well, I can actually tell you with a, with a decent degree of certainty. So we uh, we're doing it again this year. We conducted a, a demogra- demographic study and economic impact study through the business leadership program at the University of Scranton. Uh-huh. Um, and we concluded... And I, I think we can say they use reputable. I, I, would, I would say so. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, they concluded, uh, cons- based on, you know, math, yeah. they concluded by surveying everyone they surveyed and where are you spending your money, how much are you spending, blah, 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 blah all that fun stuff, data, um, that conservatively last year during our five-day festival, just during the five-day festival, not counting our year-round programming, not counting any of things that we generated somewhere in the conservative neighborhood of 150 to 200 thousand dollars get the wow. fuck wow okay that's like you know hotels restaurants venues yeah, that's life. actually not counting what we directly generate that was like consumer generated that that's not like the artists that we pay the tech we have that to rent but that was just your economic impact correct on mm-hmm. surrounding on f- outside of the french festival on a five-day festival on a five-day festival maybe let me be fair maybe a couple of days prior to the festival also count as that if you were like people driving into town and staying at hotels and stuff. But yeah, that's, and we're actually nine days this year. So we're hoping to increase that. And that's a conservative estimate. That's actually not, we think it's actually more, but yeah, but we, we, we always so try they to think, play They think at a minimum you've, you've 150 to 200,000 into, in, into the local economy, into the Lackawanna, into greater Lackawanna County in five days. Okay. Now back to everyone else got their grant. <laughs> um, a certain the the a certain county commissioner, um, Commissioner Lorraine Cummings, the Republican minority, uh, asked for she passed a motion, I believe, for our vote to be considered separate. Typically, it's an all in one vote, and then that was fine, and they voted yes on everything, and then she voted no on ours, as is her right, and then uh, the other two commissioners did vote yes in favor of it. So we got the we got the funding, and we by the way, that's there was this weird narrative for like a couple days that I. I knew came from a good place, but some people were like, give the fringe their money. We're getting it. We're getting it. Like it's, <laughs> it's there. Um, but it turned, but, but it turned into, it turned into the, something which, salacious. And oh, it tur- I mean, of course the, I mean, you know, the paper ran this big article. They called me for comment. Um, we made a very big point of, I only commented on facts. The, there was a, it seemed to be, there was a narrative being promoted that, we, because and, and 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 to her credit, she was reading our mission statement from our application. Uh, we do not believe in censoring art. We don't believe in putting adult content at the children's library, though. There was, and I and I'm, I fully believe she knew that. I don't think that she was mistaken in that regard. But there was this weird equivalency being false equivalency being insinuated in some, in my opinion, through the media and, and through different things that it was like, well, we, they have R-rated content and they have shows at the children's library, and those are two separate statements. Yeah. We have mm-hmm. adult content. If you look at our guide, lovely guide available everywhere and also at yeah. scrantonfringe.org, um, <laughs> you can see there's ratings on every show. But isn't that in a weird way saying, like, <laughs> Disney made an R-rated movie, so Nemo is not appropriate for children? Well, it's just saying that the platform, you know, we are big believers in the audience should be curating their own experience. But so, 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 so I mean, you guys... It was you, just not... It was just... It was confirmed by their own staff. It was just... But the, the, the money goes towards... This program only. We have to. We have to present. You have to prove it too. Mm-hmm. We have to provide receipts, and we usually and we provide like the marketing material, so we show them like you know a small portion goes to print this you know this page of this one guide, and we prorate it down. It goes to pay these artists. Here's their canceled checks. Here's right. you know statements from them. Or if very here's also um, a breakdown of how many people attended every day, and we typically have it organized by like adult and child, um, and the, the library helps with that. And again, it. it we got the funding. It was all fine. But, it, it, it turned into this like <clears throat> local media, social media. And again, I think 90% of it was wonderful. And we, I, we, we all at Fringe appreciated the support. We just wanted to get back to work. I mean, I mean, did you see that as like a, like an unnecessary distraction? Um, no, I mean, it's the cost of 
business, right? I mean, it's the cost of, you know, we receive public funding. We have to answer to whomever yeah, but that the, are, the public, that, that, the public like funders. Point zero zero zero. Because I think if I, I'm taking, I, I, if I think we're I, using a penny of taxpayers' dollars, I believe there should be documentation, and we do. And that's the, the, the I what I found frustrating was, um, what I was mostly concerned about was what it was kind of indirectly saying about the children's library. I'm fine. Like Team Fringe is our staff and our very tiny little staff and our board of directors are fine. Um, I did not appreciate that it was casting aspersions on the library. Well, it was mm-hmm. implying that you know yeah. the library is putting on a toddler burlesque show, Silence you know? of the Lambs. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like the Silence of the Lambs, the musical <laughs> happening at the children's library. No, right. And again, again, I'm using hyperbole. Yeah, it's like um, Winnie the Pooh, but as a man without the fur, oh just wearing God. the jacket. I mean, but th- but that's what the, the year so prior th- there was a fairy tale show about being a good neighbor, and there was um, like a musician. I sang. Uh, there was a Lily Mayo had a sing along. Yeah, uh, of like kids songs, of kids mm-hmm. of like teaching them the alphabet. Yeah, um, and then there was like a, a reading, an original reading from this like funny like Irish children's book called The Giggler Treatment that one of our board members took the lead on. It was like a you know reading with kids and it's like elves and shit. Um, well, was it shit? Because then it's already. <laughs> well, it's already no. Yeah. Excuse me, it was just elves, um, or something like that. I didn't. I never read it. Um, but it, but it. So so you're even you you even but you the fringe actually even goes so far as to 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 self rate. Well, we, and, and say, course, look, here's what you expect. We here's don't believe you, in censorship and transparency are not mutually exclusive things. Right. We don't believe in censorship. I do, of course, believe in telling you as a parent, hey, the show at a bar. You know, or at an art ga- <laughs> or at an or at an art gallery, or even at the Scranton Cultural Center. You know, this, this show may. And by the way, when I say it's R-rated, and I I, I almost feel guilty trying to justify this because it doesn't matter. It the point being that like yeah, this show we put ratings at the door of every venue with the show. It's in the guide. It's online when you buy a ticket to any show. We uh you know we we strongly encourage you are gonna like some shows. You're not gonna like some shows. Some shows are gonna be amazing. Some shows are probably gonna be. But those shows are going to fail on their own. You don't need, whether through their content or their attitude, they'll fail on their own. They deserve a platform, mm-hmm. but they but they will fail on their but own. But my point is, is that you're even you're even giving the the courtesy of course. Of, of, course. Of, of giving a rating, and you always of have. Of course, absolutely. And and and, and if we ever but, but advertised but, a show and misled someone into thinking it was age appropriate, and it turned out it was super not, I'm not going to be mortified. I'd be very disappointed in us. Absolutely, of course. So. Have there been, I'll be honest, there's some R-rated shows that I've heard that are really R-rated for, like, language purposes. Sure. We, but, I mean, we don't, you See, know. because because I look at situations like that. And you like, knew it was and, R-rated, but, so. I, but But I look at, like, plays and films and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, I think life is R-rated. Sure. But if you mm-hmm. don't want to go to it, that's but, and, totally fine. Then and, I, and, and, if and, you do not believe in same-sex marriage, I strongly encourage you not to marry someone of the same sex. If you do not like... <laughs> uncensored adult content, I encourage you not to attend a show at this festival that is rated R. And you maybe want to look into the shows that are PG-13. The shows that are rated PG, I strongly encourage that you'll probably like a couple of them. Even the Gs. We actually don't post G ratings, to be honest. We the you lowest, say it's kid-friendly? We'll either say family-friendly, kid-friendly, or we post PG as the lowest rating. Only because we just wanted that, like... A buffer. I a don't, CYA. Magic, to some people, might be offensive. Like the concept of like witches and magic and Harry Potter That's true. might be offensive. Mm-hmm. So we it's I'm not going to lie. It's almost more of a legal protection that we, you know, everything. I believe if you're a parent, either you don't care or, or care. But that's your call. <laughs> that's your that's your two roads. <laughs> Those yes. are, these are your two roads. You don't give a shit about your kid <laughs> or, you, or do you do give a shit about yes. your kid. And neither are my problem. <laughs> Yeah, but at the same time, somebody you you could say I'm that kidding, you could say God. that somebody who cares about their kid is going to take them to a G G G or a PG thing, yeah. right? At the children's library, yeah. And somebody who cares about their kid it wants them, them, wants them to yes. go see a play on 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 on, on yes. slavery, yes. Mm-hmm. That might they be. still care about yeah. their kid, but even though it's rated be, R. Yes, yeah. of course, mm-hmm. of course. None. We're not putting on pornography. Like, there's this like mm-hmm. we're we're not putting on. Oh, you're not doing ass paint art. <laughs> no. And you know what? Damn it! I tried. No, um, no, no. We are open access. I will be honest with you. Wait, it's Daisy. Repulsive. What was, wait, what was that? What was, was that something? Was it Long Came Polly? You are absolutely repulsive. Was that a Long Came Polly? Do you remember that movie? See that movie? God. Yes, was it their ass art in that? 
<laughs> None of this is going to be usable. <laughs> yes, it is. Do you? But, so I. Um, so I bring. I bring. I, I, I did want to say one thing. Yeah. We have in our Just warrior one? history. The we have only ever had to reject a show once for con- twice for content reasons. One was that it was our first year and it was like. A circus pyrotechnic thing and it was just we didn't have the venue or the liability insurance or honestly the guts to do it because we're like oh, fire yeah we're so young it's our first year we don't want to you know yeah, we, call the a, arena. We, didn't have, we didn't have a venue to do it at the time yeah. now be, we, it might be cool but mm-hmm. um the second one was an individual whose um show performance involved self-harm and that was one and we actually encouraged them to come audition we were not rejecting them we just felt that it was enabling self-harm and that was something we couldn't stand behind we would not accept a show that promotes hate speech or acts of or promotes the act of inciting violence and that i'll be honest with you that is a fair conversation to have because that's a weird place and when i was in edinburgh scotland recently when we were attending liz and i attending the international conference we attended like five days of panels and workshops and that was a topic that came up is where does censorship begin and end um would you allow an individual to uh if a st- they had an incident, uh, not their festival, but a festival in England, a big one, um, I think it was Brighton, had an episode where a stand-up comedian made uh, started taking the piss out of someone, as they say, or like really making fun of someone in the front row, and it, it turned into this really, really gross transphobic rant. And they honestly said, like, we don't approve of that, and we think it's deplorable, and we'll say we think it's deplorable, but where does our power lie? And in my objective opinion, as long as they are not... See, that's that's a weird one, though, because they were attacking someone, in essence, in the front row, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you could argue, well, that's stand-up comedy and that's that culture. Okay, and I'm, I'm not here to give an answer. I'm just here to say that's a conversation that we're always constantly having. I'm a big believer in, as long as they are not crossing a certain line, which I think common sense dictates where that line is, Yeah. then let them fail. They, If they're going to, they suck, whether talent or, like I said, they're just a horrible human being. I would rather they tried it, failed, and went off into that good sunset because our community and our audiences told them through the power of their dollar and their time, told them, no, no I'm not going yeah. to show. Mm-hmm. And they'll fail and goodbye. Now, I would not allow someone to get up on stage and talk about the beauty of the KKK. Like that to me is inciting hate speech because that has a direct correlation to an action. Well, I was going to I was going <clears> to <throat> say, you know. And this is something you don't have to answer, but if somebody, you know, had like, you know, their whole thing was called fuck Trump. Right. And they went Mm -hmm. up there and they say, you know, he should he should get ass cancer and he should, you Mm -hmm. know, get hit by a speeding train. Like, would you think would you think of that? Would you regard Mm. that as? No, but here's how I'm going to get out of being a hypocrite. I would program right if someone applied with it, I would also equally book a show that was called I Love Trump. And I think he's amazing and wonderful. Do not take that clip out of context, by the way. <laughs> like, I'm actually being serious. Like, I, Conor O'Brien legally deny that statement. I can't stand Donald Trump. So so your thing is, is but you, so you don't see that as hate speech? It's because like, it's against it's an like, individual and you know, not a group? It's both sides in his aspect. No, no, no. I'm saying if he, no, didn't, but, if he didn't counter-program it. If no one applied with an I love Trump show, you're saying? Yeah. Like so a, if no one pro, applied, a pro-Trump show. So, so to be fair, yeah. right? If 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 somebody had, you know, the you know, fuck Trump, right? Mm-hmm. You you and somebody had, I love Trump. You'd be like, all right, the balance has is kept. I'm not saying that we'd have to accept both of them. We probably would. Actually, that would make for really an interesting conversation. Um, but is I don't it not hate speech because it's against an individual. In your opinion, I would have to really think about that. I'd have to know the content of the show. I would say. That those that elect to put themselves in a public position yeah. are open to a lot more criticism than a, than a person in an audience at one night show who maybe just came out and spent their money on your show. I mean, uh, what mm-hmm. if uh, remember when Will Ferrell did the Broadway show of George uh, W. Bush? Yeah, he's a public figure. Right. So that's I mean, that's I wouldn't. And, well, I mean, is I that how give, you, even I wouldn't if it give was, platform to a sh- I would not give platform to a show that was like. See, I mean, I'm not even kidding you. I'm even nervous about talking about this. I would not give platform to a show. That was like giving you a call to act again, a call to action to incite violence or hate. Mm -hmm. I do not consider criticism Mm -hmm. of our elected leader hate speech. I consider hate speech punching down, not up. Right. I consider hate speech. He's last time I checked, he's physically fine. Well, he's not physically fine, but I I checked that he's I I checked that he's okay. Last time I checked, he's he's good. He's got his people. Um, He's 40 Big Macs in today, but he's good. (laughs) Ugh, Do you know why he does that? 
I'm sure because he's afraid of being poisoned. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's true. Yeah. That's why he only eats, eats like KFC and McDonald's. <laughs> because no one knows who they're getting it for, so they're not going to like, right. yeah. That's so, well, that sounds a lot. Um, <laughs> We're still on hate speech. I think there's a difference. I, I, I know that it, I sound like I'm being a liberal hypocrite. I really do. I think there's a difference. And I think that if we sat in a room together, um, you know, with people from different walks of life, I I believe understanding your privilege is not to say that you have not faced opposition. So, for example, I have faced opposition in my life, but the color of my skin has never been one of those things. So I acknowledge that. Yeah, I have never faced opposition, and I, and I've, and I have seen firsthand others face it because of the color of their skin. So to me, when people give that argument of, well, I, and that argument of, well, you know, people of color can be racist too, by actual literal Webster's definition, they can't. You really? Can, no. Racism is an ism. Racism is a system. That is mean that I have benefited or I have not suffered. If you know, uh, the you know, because there's the, it's always the it's always the idiot from the South, you know, NASCAR lover who's like, you know, I'm I'm white and I'm I'm not rich and powerful. No, but the majority of people who are rich and powerful are white. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. that it's that def, it's that different. I'm not going to sit here and turn this into that platform because I'm not equipped to speak to an extent about so, it. So a person of a person of color, you know, can be uh, can be prejudiced. I'm, I'm I'm literally speaking from a grammatical definition. They can be prejudiced. They can be hateful. Of course, any human being is capable of love and hate. But and racism, sexism, ism is that the system in power and place, the system in which you live and operate within, is structured to empower or to elevate one person for whatever reason over another. A woman cannot be sexist because she is the victim of a system. That's you know I do you know what I mean? Oh, well, I, I think, but for every example of that, I think there's like, you know, one or two that you can say that like, well, here's an instance where it could be conceived as being uh, sexist or being... You can conceive it as but, being but I, prejudiced. But I, but I you think, cannot conceive it but as I being... Think, but mystic. I think your greater That's, point is is that when it comes to like self-censorship, self-censorship, like censorship to you, I think, and, and especially to the fringe, is like this line in the sand where I think... Generally, everyone can agree that this is too far or this is not, you know, self-harm. Like, there's some people that do that for art. I get it, but I, I don't get it. I'm not yeah. going to lie. I also might have had a different tune. That individual didn't had never done it before. So, oh, like, so there was a fear there oh, of, like, injury. I can understand and, that, especially. Yeah. That's, it's, there's a, you know, it's just that it's not, uh, you know, um, I talked to other fringe festivals and so they've had similar issues. So you brought up the chicken sacrifice thing. So uh, cats. Okay, <laughs> but we'll do chickens let's, too. <laughs> let's 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 say chickens just to put it in a American because it's on the front of this. Our baby Raymond. The There's French no Purdue festival. cats. He's, I'm, Purdue I'm a vegetarian, chickens. by the way, so I love my baby Raymond. <laughs> um, that's the name of our mascot. Um, oh, okay. Raymond is the name. Raymond Hood is the architect of the cultural center, and he was oh, the architect okay. of like Thirty Rock and Radio City mm-hmm. Music Hall. So we yeah. named Raymond our King Raymond after him. Um, well, now you know. Um, <laughs> the more you, you know. know. Um, that was good. That was actually a, decent, <laughs> Is that a harmony. That was kind of a harmony. I think oh, I, would, okay. I think one of us was a little pitchy. Uh, I'm assuming it was you. <laughs> sure. All right, but keep going. We all assume things. Keep going. Um, what was I talking about? No one knows. Now you know I, I feel from earlier. Know what the thing you were talking about. with other fringe people. Oh, um, they had someone apply. Different festivals had someone apply, and it involved you know self harm, uh, cutting the head off. A, in this instance, it was cutting the head off a chicken. Okay. And their loophole was well, you signed a contract with this certain venue, and they made it clear that no liquids can get on the floor. Like you can't spill water, so by proxy you can't spill blood. Blood. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of that loophole. I've sh- I'm assuming other festivals have permitted it because here's the thing: if you have all the permit permits, if you have all the licensing, if it's permitted, if you have all the tarps and the health and safety things are, do you have you never been to like an old 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 school like deli, or like an old school like if you go to I mean again we're speaking culturally, but I mean I've seen places in in the country where like. You know. Well, over in Europe, especially like in yeah. Spain and everything, you see like all of the yeah. bulls in the backyard. I mean, or, and then I mean they're I, know that we, I know that we have the perception that they're different, but what's the difference between a lobster? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you can pick your, you, you go to a restaurant and you go, I want that one, mama. It looks well, because, at me funny. Because I don't want to see how the cheeseburger is made. I want I, to eat no, the cheeseburger. I understand. I'm just saying, though, that what if a show involved cooking a lobster? Interesting. Yeah. It happens. It happens at, it happens at Price Chopper. It can't happen on a stage. I'm not for it. Let me clarify. I am not for that. Um, 
I am vegetarian. I'm actually a pescatarian. I do eat lobster now and then. Um, <laughs> but I don't want to see so it happen. So you go to that show. But yes. I don't want to see it happen. You don't want to hear it scream? No. It doesn't need a it microphone. It doesn't scream. <laughs> kind Just of, air they, escaping. No, they, they kind of do. They have emotions. So... I mean, um, so so going back, I mean, I am just the most disgusting liberal right now. Go, I mean, I mean, going back, I mean, to to it, because the the fringe was attacked in some way, and then and then oh, you were personally sure. attacked. I would not say I was attacked. I don't feel attacked. you were you were personally spoken about. Um, I was the center everywhere. I would sure. <laughs> I would, but I mean, everywhere. but do you do you find that I was the center of a social media do you, do storm? You, um, <laughs> That you were like the. <laughs> How's it feel, and, Kanye? And, and, other, I mean, and, and Liz, and Liz, you know, I mean, any member of our team had to deal with it. I just happened to be the figurehead, so I happened to be the, you know. But so my question is, is, is sure. like, is like, is like, do you, do you do you find that that whole incident happened um, disappointing? I mean, I mean, I don't, look, no, and, I, I honestly don't know, and I'm, and I'm no, because she had every right to vote how she wanted to vote yeah but did she have did she have every right to single you out and and tangent it do you mean the fringe i don't yeah. think she singled me out i it was didn't come, in, I didn't come were. into the equation because of a social media post that is still up and you can go view it on my wall yeah, actually my actually actually the the comments she was reading i believe were from my wall <laughs> On Facebook. I, I actually, by the way, anytime anyone... And I laughed my ass off because a battery-operated any... sex toy was the funniest oh, thing see, I've I ever heard in my vile. life. I thought that was vile. I thought that was vile. Here's the deal. I have incredible, fundamental... Not even fundamental. I disagree with her on almost everything she says, like politically. And, right. and as a leader of my community, I, I do not think that she is the leader I want in my community. Right. However, I, I, I took issue with the... Anytime on my wall or that I could see anyone made a comment about, you know... You know, there was a lot of sexist. I, I not. I shouldn't say a lot. I, I saw mean, a couple it, of sexist comments. So, is, was there a little disappointment? Because I was a little disappointed in the reaction. I was disappointed that people. That when I say people, see, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to confuse this narrative. I'm not giving her that opportunity. I there was a small minority that I saw in my world that focused on inappropriate and totally unrelated matters, and I thought that was wrong. And I actually called them out on that. I'm like, that's irrelevant. Yeah, that's irrelevant mm-hmm. because I have also, by the way seen that happen on me sure i have been called uh, i oh my god scranton times tribune i could line a bird cage with the, <laughs> with with how many times someone's called me you know faggot um Where? Who? wait, wait oh, on the message board on the, on the scranton times scranton times comment section okay i'm gonna tell you a quick story scranton times comment section i think is the greatest gift to mankind and here's why so <laughs> i when, don't disagree with you when rock 107 <laughs> announced they were having their one of their bat events they did a few years about two years ago maybe yeah, yeah. they announced eddie money yeah, and and you know oh, God the, bless him. the anniversary. Oh my God! Listen, the anniversary concert Rock 107 is being performed by Eddie Money. First comment by Scranton Times Tribune user Pete Moss. I don't know what your actual name is, but I love you. <laughs> what a great name! And by the way, by the way, he's one of the people that has made fun of me, and I still love him or her <laughs> dearly, or they dearly. Um, and the first comment was Eddie Money playing Rock 107. Pete Moss, is it open casket? <laughs> <laughs> Me oh. and I have never laughed so hard in my life. And then when, the, when this thing happened and he made like a kind of like, oh, it just sounds like another entitled, annoying liberal kid on um, about me. I was like, Pete Moss, no. <laughs> Pete Moss, I love you. I love you. When they, when you. they, uh, when they, what was the thing that they wrote about me in the paper where, um, you oh, made that No, no, no. Who's Connor, there? You know what it was? What's that? I think it was, God, um, I made the first time the fringe came up two years ago mm-hmm. with, uh, the, the, the warning of, we're not going to give the public library money cause they do stuff with the fringe. Oh yeah. That happened. That, that, yeah. So I posted like all this crazy shit and then mm-hmm. the times called me for a comment. I think, I believe I commented about it. Mm-hmm. And one of the because I started that petition, you started the petition yeah. just to see like where you stood, like cause, who, because who believes in this? Yeah. No mm-hmm. one. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll go home. <laughs> so, one of the comments, I forget who it was. They, um, how old do you think a guy named Marky really is? I was is? just gonna say <laughs> that. I, I know that's I amazing. Say, I signed up for disgust just to respond. You see what I responded? <laughs> well, no. What you say? I said thirty-eight or thirty-six, but I'm trying every year to get younger. <laughs> nice. Yeah, but, they, been, I mean, but called, I, it's 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 the, it's been, the Victorian freak show of the. I've been called ugly. I've been called. Oh, no. I know. 
<sighs> right? That actually offended me more than anything. Ugly. Yeah. And it was a really good picture, too. <laughs> like, I looked like, my, like, like, you know, cheekbones were really good. Like, you know, I was I looked very, like, longingly in the distance. I was, I was beautiful. And they, I mean, are you are you are you are you hoping like that this I mean, it was two years in a row this got brought up. Are you hoping like there's no third year that this gets brought up? Because I think I all the doesn't. issues about it are put to bed I, and the misconceptions. My sense. And I and, and because I would have been pissed about the misconceptions. I was annoyed by those. But again, I, I was not the I took the less of the brunt of that, I feel. Because I was just speaking truth. I was just speaking like I would when the Strand Times would call me with all credit to their reporters because they're doing their job. They would ask me for there was a little bit more of an emotional driven question. And I would just simply say, you know, what? I'm really just going to I'll clarify facts. I will tell you, no, the funding goes towards this. No, that does, that is not true. And then, I mean, by by like week two, they had quotes from, you know, the Lackawanna County Arts and Culture deputy director, like again, answers to them. Of course, mm-hmm. and as, as they do, just clarifying that, like. No, that that this is where I I can tell you based upon the documentation and and my own knowledge of this organization, that is not the case. There was also something that was brought up because of the fact that we work with um, the cultural center was brought up because like well they're like none of the month we're not allowed from that project stream we're not allowed to use any of that money to pay rental fees to the library the cultural center or the Everhart because of funding restrictions because they get larger amounts right so it's like you know it's double it's, it's considered double dipping yeah. yeah. We're allowed to like pay fees, like you know, services fees for certain right. things. Not one dime of that money goes to pay rent at the children's library or at the cultural center, like at all. We do pay rent to them for other things, but that does not come from that money. That comes from like corporate sponsorships and stuff, and like ticket sales. So I mean, and 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 I don't want to, and I don't want to belabor this. I, I, I mean, I really don't either. I'm getting kind of tired of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I I just. My final, my final thing is, is, is that were you, uh, kind of pleased or, or overwhelmed by the outpouring of support? Yeah, that was going to be my question. What were you going to say? I'm sorry. No, I said that was going to be my question. Why don't you do it? No, you just did it. I know, but you don't talk enough and I, (laughs) well, you two have your own little bromance going on here and I'm just enjoying the show. (laughs) Connor and I just have shirtless hugs all the time. (laughs) Um, the support was really touching. Mm-hmm. That was really lovely to see. And it was, it was, some of it was militant, but. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, I think some people used this matter to have a bigger conversation. Yeah. So, um, you know, I did see some people like starting like Facebook threads of like, we got to come to the fringes of defense. And then I had to reach out. I'm like, oh, we're fine. <laughs> I'm like, I'm okay. Like, I, I, yeah, we I, don't need the defense. I had, I'll be good. totally honest with you. I had a half day where I had a bit of a, not even a meltdown. I just had, I had a day where I was just like, Oh my God. Um, I think I talked well, to you on the phone that yeah, day. Yeah. I remember talking to you, but I, I, I was like, I'm like, Connor, like, I'd like I'll leave wherever I'm at right now. Like, do you need, oh, no, do you need, what do you need? What do you need? And you're like, I don't need anything. It's just overwhelming. It was just a lot. It was just a lot. I was, and I, I think was, it was overwhelming even from the positive side. We were getting ready to launch applications or we might've even been in applications at that point. Like we were just, there was just, there was a lot happening at once. There was just a lot, there was just a lot going on. Um. Yeah, and I was just tired. Literally, physically, I was just tired. Yeah, I think I, th- I, th- I, you know what? Honestly, I think you hit a brick wall. I think that's what it is, and I think you needed a nap and for a I couple happy- of days. Yeah, and it, it was great. Fine. It was great. Yeah. It was fine, and, and you know, happy to have a conversation. Um, you know, and then lawsuit threat happened. <laughs> Um, with a smile on his face. Yeah. When, when, I mean, when you found that nothing out, ever, yeah, but, 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 but like, you're. It, I mean, do you almost go like? You serious? Yeah. It was disappointing because it kind of shut down any co- any potential of a conversation at that time. Because so in any 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 com- any com- any communicate communicative productivity that could have happened I after can't. that. Like it, yeah, talk to my lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. What's my lawyer going to comment on? Nothing. Their office reached out to me. I'm not going to be, well, I'm not going to lie. Their office reached out to me before that happened in the interim. I genuinely was not available. Like I was not going to. you were like not in town. I wasn't in town. At one point, I think I was getting a wisdom tooth out. Like I was genuinely like, okay, we can set, we can set a time and place. I got it. You know, I got to get some stuff together and this is, you know, becoming a bit of a public matter. I never, uh, uh, uh like reached out to any media outlets for like direct comment. I never like. Let's keep it going. Like yeah. it was just like, you know, I answered questions that I was asked and I went on and continued to do my job and made a salad. Like that was <laughs> like, that was, that was my life. I was like in a sweatshirt and like eating salad. No, but you handled it really, really well. 
And I give with a lot. Class. Of, I give a lot yes. of credit to my team, Liz, mm-hmm. and the rest of the board were very supportive because they. I mean, they were in a in a slightly less way. They were also getting you know bombarded with questions, and we kind of just held you know, this is the answer. This is the, you know, I don't have to clarify anything. This is the truth. The truth speaks out. Yeah, there's no there's there's mm-hmm. no there's no be- there's no like it's not poetry. This is it no. just is or it isn't. And I just didn't want to belabor the conversation. That was all. But then when I would I was really really more than willing to go in and have a conversation. Um, I would have gone alone, but I would I would have been happy to go and have a you know let's I, let's talk about this. What questions do you have? How can I clarify any misconceptions you've been sure led to believe or right. or, or conceived? Right. And then I made a Facebook post um, that was like thanking people, and it, it you can go look. I'm not gonna. It had other things, but I'm not gonna pretend. I totally remember what something like speaking truth to power or something. Um, and the commissioner took issue with that. And that's where then I don't even want to say the threat of lawsuit because that's not true. It was like, look into it. The the potential of a, like suing me and or the festival as an organization. For so slander the, and libel, wasn't it? It was slander. I don't, I don't even I don't even remember. It was something like that. Yeah, it was based on I think it had to have been just about me personally. Like, I think it would have I don't think the organization would have been held responsible. I think if anything, because I made the post. Yeah. Which autonomously from said nothing yeah mm-hmm. no i made the post from connor it was connor yeah fringe never you know you said know. words except no. thank you and you can contact the you mean that those our documentation is public you can contact the county if you really want to like see our grant applications or any of our you know for our, our wrap-up paperwork and stuff that's that's all public available i mean i don't know if it's like sitting in an office waiting for you but i'm sure if you <laughs> if you want it i'll forward it to you oh shit <laughs> patty <laughs> we got They're, another one somebody's finally here for that folder <laughs> um i felt for though I, I i was upset that the library was being indirectly uh, well it seemed like they were something like like something something was being used Someone as, wrote as a like a, the- as like a as like almost like an extortion thing where it was like well maybe we won't fund them at all just because they have this little interaction with this this group i, I that was the part That's that i found away? offensive oh, okay i heard some other people say that yeah. i heard some other people take that away um and i'm like i'm like how dare you yeah, it's all good. threaten this entire organization because they work with this other good organization that doesn't yeah, it's do all good. the things that you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, what's 2018 going to be like? So, the 2018 Scranton Fringe Festival. And this is, is the point Connor's going to read the entire book. And get ready. Here we go. No, the 2018 Scranton Fringe Festival. It's nine days long, September 22nd through the 30th. Why did you double the days? Uh, we almost doubled the days. Yeah. Holy sheep shit. So we kick off with our Big Gay Story Slam, which is an LGBT storytelling competition. We have the phenomenal Molly Balloons. You can check her out on Instagram. I've seen her. She's, She's amazing. Fucking great. Yeah. She's amazing. And we also have drag queen extraordinaire Pissy Miles. Yeah. Um, uh, you okay there, Jim? I did two snacks. <laughs> I've never heard I'm that just, I'm just like, I'm just like. <laughs> Is it my radio voice saying that? <laughs> no, I just I pissy miles. <laughs> I love, a, love, how many love miles? Drag how many miles? Pissy miles. <laughs> how that, were the miles? They were pissy. It's not Missy Piles, is it? No, it's pissy. No, miles. Missy Piles is an actress. Pissy, pissy miles, miles is a drag, drag queen. queen. Yeah. I, I always, uh, I always have that like brain fart. Yeah, Missy um, Pyle was in uh, uh, Josie and the Pussycats. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! That girl's a skunk on her head. Um, you can. <laughs> you got to watch Josie and the Pussycats. It's amazing. It is amazing. I, I love that movie. See it. <laughs> it has it. It's it, there's such subtext in there about America today. <laughs> Jesus you. Christ! Thank that you, girl is a skunk on her head. Thank you, Stacey. Um, so it's September 22nd through the 30th in over 13 venues in downtown Scranton. You are now. You're not going to get a day of sleep for nine days. Um, the first couple of days I'll be okay. The last five I'll be dying. Um, but, uh, we kick off with our big gay story slam Saturday, September 22nd at the cultural center. It is on track to sell out like really like we are going to have to start turning people away at one point. Right. So do not delay. Um, you should broadcast that live. Any show I was thinking about. We'll talk. Okay. We'll talk. We were actually considering broadcasting it in the building. That might be cool. To too. another oh, room. Yeah. yeah that's I don't know how to do that. So let's talk. I don't know how to do okay. that. We'll talk. I do. We'll talk. Mm-hmm. Um, you heard it here, folks. Um, I just said I know how to do it. I said so I was going to do it. No, it's an interesting mm-hmm. conversation because we talk about that a lot about like broadcasting things because we don't want to limit people, but also that's, you know, live experience. That's also ticket sales. Mm-hmm. Don't stay home. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, so you can go to scrantonfringe.org slash tickets for links to all of these events. There's over 120 some individual perf- shows and performances. Wow. There's like 50 productions, but they all have multiple show times. You have a 50, Connor. Holy Christ. About approximately. 
Um, one thing I'm really cool about, and, like, and Stacey and Mark, if you'll turn to page, I want to say 15. In your textbook, turn, turn to page 17. Um, okay. Oh, you built a fucking 15, map? The, mm-hmm. If you go to the immersive igloo. Oh, here we go. It's absolutely brilliant. You can see those Ooh. photos. It's it's only a few limited seatings, limited uh, ca- capacity. It's going to be in that park, the Renaissance Park. Behind, oh, up on top there? Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, behind 500 block of Lackawanna Avenue, like behind AFA and above Bogart Court. You it's can only act, open for an hour and 15 minutes? You this can looks it. so cool. No, it's open more times than that. It's just that this is when we're uh, doing the... It has to be dark to do the show times. Um, but it's, you know what go, happens in there? You go into the igloo, and it's a light sound... Um, Get out of here. That looks yeah. so cool. Stacy. Like, I want to go. Stacy, mark the he calendar. Just came, he's okay. at Rochester Fringe right now, and he just came off of another successful run at Burning Man with it. Oh, this looks amazing. How can you not do well at Burning Man with an igloo? With lights. So I need... <laughs> I re- e. We really need help for, pro, you know, spreading the word about that, because I think more people... I don't think that this people know about so it, but cool. I think that it's... Yeah. The immersive igloo. Does that mean that you put me underwater? Whatever. What what so who are the venues who are who are like we the, have, who are like we have the, several spaces inside the Scranton Cultural Center at the Masonic Temple uh, Artists for Art Gallery we have Artworks Gallery we're also creating a few pop up spaces like at five eighteen Lackawanna that's two doors down from AFA uh-huh. um, we have the Lackawanna County Children's Library the Bog um, the space, Leonard space at Olive the Leonard um, St Luke's uh, the Lucan Center it's a beautiful theater space on in Wyoming. there on yeah. Wyoming Avenue uh, and the University of Scranton Brennan Hall. Uh, Madison. Oh, oh, Scranton Cultural Center has Craftsman Junior Ballroom and Shopland. Scranton Cultural Center, we mm-hmm. have we have venues on the, the lower level Junior Ballroom, third floor Craftsman Hall, and fourth floor Shopland. They're good over there, aren't mm-hmm. they? They're phenomenal. We love working with them. Um, what what's so? How what, what? Give me the details about like how do we get tickets? How do so, we? So yeah, so the festival works that most events. There are some events that are free. There are also there are also some events that are like just five dollars. Typically, though, for the most part, uh, shows are priced at twelve dollars per show. Or if you buy, I should have worn it to show on camera <laughs> as I'm reaching for nothing. Um, if you buy a, a couch, fi- just a fart, five okay? dollar fringe button. I'm okay. If you five, if you buy, oh, you sat on your phone. Yeah. If you buy, it squeezed you buy, on the leather. It's the leather. It squonked. Um, it's, it, you know what it sounded like? It's a, Remember up when the fat kid hit the window <laughs> and just scrapes. Oh. It's like. <laughs> That's so sweet. And he's holding on to the, the I balloons. I love that movie. That's one of my favorite movies. That movie's hysterical. You might be, will you be my friend, sir? Um, I love you. Okay. So, as I was saying, the 2018 <laughs> Scranton Fringe. I'm trying to get, like, one soundbite out of here that you can, like, use out of context. You have the, the adults over here. The 20-year-olds the, trying to be so serious. The 2018 Scranton Fringe <laughs> Festival is September 22nd. Wait, hold on. Oh, take two. Shut the no, fuck take two. up, Mark. Take two. Shut take two. up your entire mouth. <laughs> With your goddamn L.A. hat. We get it. We get it. I like cocaine, too. God damn it, you fucking whore. Shut <laughs> the hell up. I'm done. This is amazing. God damn, motherfucker. Fatherfucker. Shut the fucking fuck. Fucking up. I give my permission for none of this to be used. I will pay $12 to see that, too. Oh, my God. My eyes are crying. Actually, I do have an idea I want to run by you two after this. But oh, my God, my out. eyes right. are crying. Oh, it's All amazing. All right, back to, the, back to that little festival we were talking about. You have my full attention now, that's for sure. I didn't before? Oh, no, you had it before. All right, fuck you, too. <laughs> yes! Fuck you, fuck you, You're fuck your... You're cool, your, I quit. God almighty. Fatherfucker. I'm trying to say fatherfucker more often now because I think women have had it, had it bad enough. <laughs> Moms are great. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, that's right. You're a mom. How many kids do you have? Two. I no one f- cares. <laughs> um, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So, so okay, I mean, can we, t- can we, t- can we t- yeah, take a yeah, breath? Yeah, yeah. Go back, and then I'd like to go through the sponsors too. We can. You can use that as a blooper. I don't care. But no, um, details. So yeah. So the 2018 Scranton Fringe Festival, September 22nd through the 30th. It's a th- over 13 venues in downtown Scranton, the Cultural Center, Atha Gallery, the Leonard, you name it. Um, it's not possible without some of our really phenomenal sponsors. Um, I, I don't even want to begin to well, try how much, and how, them. Much is, how much is a pass? 
So, <clears throat> oh, so you can buy tickets to every show for twelve dollars individually, or for five bucks if you buy Fringe Button, you can get in for eight. So if, if you go to two shows, it pays for itself. Right. Um, it also on page seven of the guide, and the li- it's also available online on our website, ScrantonFringe.org. There's a list of twenty two local businesses that are offering discounts. They started back in August through the end of the year. Wow. So the button alone is like. Worth it. Really can I, worth can it. I run through those real quick? So there's there's a, a Dezo, Embassy Vinyl, Analog Cultural, Nada and Company, uh, Bar Pazzo, yes. Note Perfume, yes. Cafe Sevda, yes. On and On, Comics on the Green, Peculiar Slurp Shop, which I love. They're so good. Um, Coney Island Lunch, Solana Go Go, Crotty's on Ash, Steamtown Hot Yoga, Da Vinci Pizza, Terra Preta Prime, Duffy Accessories, Velos, Veloci, Veloci, Veloci. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> Eden, the Vegan Cafe, the the Velvet Blushy, Elvis, um, Electric City Bakehouse, and Whiskey Dicks, which I still think is the name of the best bar. It's not, I don't know if it's the best bar, but it's the best I bar pronou- name. I've been pronouncing it Veloce, and I'm so sorry, Aaron and Sarah, <coughs> if I'm wrong. They're really phenomenal. It's a new coffee and bike shop on Franklin Avenue by Ale Mary's. They're yeah, really, if you really can't great. can't just blame me on this, because I don't know. No, no, I no, don't. I'm, I'm horrible, so... Forgive me, guys, but your place is awesome. I've, I've, so been, where, I've been so, there. So where can people get the buttons? So you can buy the buttons at any of those 22 places we just listed. You can also buy them at the Scranton Fringe headquarters, which is on the first floor of the Leonard Theater at 335 Adams Avenue for this year. Oh, is that what you are? That's our office this year. Oh, yeah. good. So good, our good. office hours are going to vary. <clears throat> um, when in doubt, you can always go online. Because artists. <laughs> when in doubt, well, as we're getting closer to the festival, we're going to be open more and more. Um, when in doubt, uh, go to scrantonfringe.org and you can contact us and we can always answer any questions. Um, and the 2018 sponsors... The buttons will also be available at least while supplies last at all the venues at the ticket boxes. Um, the sponsors are the, the Keystone Structural Group. Oh, there's uh, so many sponsors. Fancy Parsley, JVW mm-hmm. Inc., mm-hmm. Realty Network, Luma, Posture Interactive, mm-hmm. um, Lamar, Time Shamrock, mm-hmm. Paramo Landscaping, The Slocum mm-hmm. Firm. Is that Hunt? Slocum? Uh, no. Oh. No. The Slocum Firm. Uh, wait, what's PC mean? They're Professional... A- it's a law firm, so I don't know what that... Oh, I'm not even close. The Slocum Firm, good for you guys. Rainbow Alliance, Matt Scranton Nerd. Made, The Chamber, WVIA, Voyager Video, uh, WNEP, and special thanks to Pocono Arts Council, the Pennsylvania Council of the Arts, the state agency, <laughs> Architectural Heritage Association, the Scranton Area Community Foundation, and Lackawanna County. Yes, sir. I mean, you guys... There's also more that have come in since the guy printed. I mean, but you guys, I mean, next year's five years? Next year's our big five year? Dude, you're fringe you five year. Are, you get, you yes. and Liz are killing it, man. I know. Thank you. We do our best. I mean, do you think this year's going to be the best year and next year is going to be yeah. the best year? And Yeah. Every year, it has to, if, if, if every year, if it doesn't get better, then I have we have to seriously question what are we doing? Like, if every year's not better than the previous year, then we have to be asking Why what are we doing? Why don't you have to ask, add, add short films next year? We do have films this year. We have an Emmy Award winning journalist coming. Really? Yeah. At the University of Scranton. I just did the sound mix on Bohm's movie. Uh, oh, we have we have uh, Charlie Chaplin's Body, and we also have The Omega Male, which is are two locally produced films. And we also have Inside Mecca, Insights Along the Path of Abraham. It's on Sunday, September 23rd at 3 p.m. at the University of Scranton. All the film that we do at the University of Scranton is free. Reservations are encouraged. Again, you can find this at scrantonfringe.org. Do, do you think maybe it'll be cool if maybe, uh, maybe we can try to find a way next year to... We could do films here. Sure. You want to do films at this location? What's wrong with this location? I wanted to use this location, and you told me no. Huh. Well, maybe we were in a tiff. <laughs> no, you just, it was an insurance thing. <laughs> well, just, just give me your... Just, do you have insurance? Yeah. yeah. Give me a COI. We're good. Okay. All right. All right. Um, <laughs> no, and also, sincerity to answer the question, we do love film. We just found that it's, it's just... It's... It's such a different beast than the than live performing arts. Absolutely. And we want to do everything we do as best we can. I wonder if there's a way where we can do an interactive film. Sure, of course there is. You can do that this year. I actually have an I actually want to do a live talk show during one of the nights of the festival, like streaming it live, and I really want to talk to you guys about that. You want me to be on the talk show? <clears throat> yeah. You want me to be on the talk show? I want you to like be the host of the talk. Yeah, you got you two like Yeah, oh. we could we could set up a satellite studio uh, down to like closer to town. And we have all the artists like come on and do like a talk show and promote it. Oh, well, all right. Well, let's talk about that afterwards. Let's talk about it afterward. Yeah. Stop making lovey eyes to the camera. I'm loving it. I'm loving just watching it. I'm going to 
bring my kids and myself to the Fringe Festival yes. every day just yes. to see you. Yes. <laughs> I really recommend starting off at the Big Gay Story Slam. Yes. Come I'm at so seven. excited That's about that. That's right? September 22nd. It starts around 8, but come at 7 o'clock for like the cocktail hour. It's all ages. Anyone can attend. Second floor of uh, Fourth floor. Fourth, Fourth, floor. Fourth. It's in Chaplin Hall. Oh, you're in Chaplin? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Killer. It's a beautiful venue. Yeah. Um, Drag tr- queens are great with kids. Oh, and the Manning's ice cream truck is going to be there. If you need more reason, um, and we have and the entertainment, the musical live entertainment is going to be amazing. Molly Balloons is is absolutely out of this world, and it's going to sell out. I sound like a broken record. I just keep saying that because my heart is going to break about how many people we're probably going to have to turn away. Yeah. And it's just ticket sales That's are a good problem to have, though, Connor. Uh, it mm-hmm. is, it is. But I wish we could have, you know, for future years, if it keeps growing like this, we're going to put it into like, well, you Maybe know, pop that sucker out into the lobby. Let's talk. Okay. <laughs> but no matter what, though, buy your tickets now. ScrantonFringe.org slash tickets. You can also buy a VIP pass for $75, mm. which gets you into everything. You also get the button with that. Gets you into everything. And the button gets you $5 off. So it's uh, five, $4. The button's $5. And it gets you $4 off tickets. So you actually have to go to like a show in a tenth, and you've already made the money back for that. Let alone the discounts that you get at those 22 <laughs> businesses we oh, mentioned before. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's right. The, the, end button, of the, year. the button. Wait, the button. Till uh, December, December 31st, 31st, 2018? Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Wow. So, like, you do, do your retail Christmas shopping at, like, places like Duffy's, go out to eat. Mm-hmm. Like, during the festival, that button pays for itself quadruple over. And the whole point is the proceeds of the button, since we give away over 70% of our uh, gross revenue to the artists from ticket sales, the button sales help us sustain. Yeah, but the other amazing thing too is like even that number of of one fifty to two hundred thousand dollars that you bring into the local economy just oh, in those days. And now if you double it, we'll see. <clears throat> you know what I mean? We'll see. It's you like, can also if you're from out of the area or if you're even from the area and you really want to make a weekend of it, you can also go to scrantonfringe.org/hotels. There's various local hotels downtown and in the surrounding area that are offering special discounts. You got all your bases covered, homie. We work hard. Yes, I'm, you le- do. I'm leaving here and I'm answering like 30,000 emails. 30,000. <laughs> All right. Like we're not going to wait, but <coughs> close lot. enough. Oh, oh, the actor that doesn't over exaggerate. <laughs> oh. I don't exaggerate ever. And if you insinuate that, I'll kill myself. <laughs> no, suicide's not funny. <coughs> My being I, dramatic I, is funny. I, I, I absolutely adore you. I, I love you so much. I absolutely adore everything that you do. Stacey, I'm really glad you were here for this conversation. <laughs> Me too. Are you kidding? I'm, I feel so bad. No, this is so I awful. I laughed. Do you have any so questions hard. you want to ask? Because I feel like we should. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm great. Thanks. I'm even better now that we just had. I mean, I was literally just on my back kicking my feet laughing so freaking hard. What, what do you got? Any projects coming up? No, she was, she was on her back kicking because she couldn't roll over. Oh, shit. <laughs> My back's Father killing fucker. me. My, my, Thank my you. Back's there you go. Me. There you go. Father fucker. No, I mean with all sincerity, man. Like I do I, love everything, you too. every you know, you know that I don't bullshit you. So I, I I'm just, I'm just really, I'm, I'm really proud of, of of what you guys are doing, and I'm really, Thank you. And, and 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 it's one of the few instances that when they they go low, you go high, and it works. Yes. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate that. We really do appreciate that. And thank you for giving us a platform. I'm not. I know this sounds like we're being asked kissy right now, but thank you for giving us a platform to talk about this. Please you go think to the camera seen that enough. Please go to scrantonfringe.org. I'll just keep popping into the. To yes. the yeah. <laughs> Is that available online? Yeah. The booklet. Yep. Yeah. So scrantonfringe.org. Scrantonfringe.org. You can either just view PDF. it like. You can either download it as a PDF, like in your browser, or you can just like there's that like it's a plugin. You can just like view it. Scroll. Scroll mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. All right. Very cool. You can so also you find sure this all throughout downtown Scranton. Good. Good. Oh, what'd you forget? I don't think I forgot. And on anything. page seventeen is my headshot. <laughs> I am actually acting in a show this year for the first Are time you really? ever. What are you doing? I co-created a show with a musician from New Orleans. It's a light. It's called Light Sound. It's about. It's a father son story about dementia. Really. And memory. It's yeah. Um, it's at the Scranton Cultural Center at the Junior Ballroom. It's called but, Light but, Sound. But but. but, but. It, I mean, it, that's that's what it's about, right? It's about a father and son. What a very, what a very important. Uh, I actually conceived slice it, of life. I actually conceived it when I was uh, doing uh, Hamlet. Oh, because okay, two his years dad ago, goes crazy, doesn't he? The dad's dead. Yeah, that's the whole premise. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't read Chomps. Uh, it was also when Bowie passed away, and as I mentioned earlier, there's only been a few celebrities that I've cried, and I bawled my <clears throat> eyes out. I loved him so much since I was a kid. Do you know? Who, I've do, every do, album. Um, I've every. Um, you know Jimmy, right? Yeah. Oh, Tom Petty was inconsolable for like a week. I could see that. I saw him only about two years ago before he died. Two years Phenomenal, prior. Phenomenal, right? Yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it was a new venue in Allentown. My brother my brother is a huge Tom Petty fan and took me to see him. One of the best live shows I've ever seen. And really, like, simple. Not mm-hmm. over the top. <clears throat> just no, got it's up. just rock and roll, mm-hmm. man. Oh, man, it was so much fun. I mean, I, I was the youngest person in the audience by like 42 years, but... <laughs> and Prince. And my, my brother, but... My mom lost her mind at Prince. Oh, my God, well, Tim McDermott. I, the minute I heard that, that was all I could think about. It was like, oh, my God, is Tim okay? 
Oh, really? Oh, Tim loved Prince. Oh, mm-hmm. God. That boy. Do you know the Can you, I play do, this guitar? Do you, know, do you know there's enough material in his vault to release an album every year for the next 100 years? Because <sighs> he's prolific. Yeah. People like him and like, you know, like whether you love her or hate her, I love her. But like Dolly Parton, do you know she still writes like mm-hmm. five songs a day or something brilliant, like brilliant? Yeah. I feel like that's like a like a disease they have to get out. If they don't, they go nuts. Yeah. Well, we see what happens when they don't. And yeah. we see what happens when they go down that path. Yeah. And you get and and and, go, and and on that and on that point, that's what you do. You give people an outlet. You give people yes. an opportunity. So my last little plug. Yeah. If this, if this makes it in, I don't care. Um, so light we sound. We don't edit any of this. You absolutely have to edit out that cursing series. That was absolute nonsense. Are you kidding me? It was not not. It was <laughs> fucking gold. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so oh, my mother's gonna see it. Um, no, it's okay. No, she doesn't. She doesn't care about she you. She doesn't care about me. <laughs> Getting babs. If you're seeing this, I know you. I know you love me. Um, but uh, the um, one more plug. Light Sound, I co-created with Daniel Amandy, who's this phenomenal touring musician from New Orleans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so he, it's a mixture. It's a hybrid of a concert and a play. So I perform, and then it inter- the music is connected, but then he performs his original new album um, live on stage, and it's like this weird, and it's pro- digital projection. Simone's been directing it with Are us. Are you doing that in Shoplin? Doing that in the Junior Ballroom. I love it's to more, see that. It's a more mm-hmm. intimate show. It's, so it's a father-son story about a, about a <clears> lawn <throat> put off road trip, their final road trip together, and it's about um, dementia, and it's about the people we're supposed to love. Why is, it, is it honest? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. It's not based on a real story, by the way. I don't yeah, no, no, know. No, no, no. But, but, but like that's that's something like nobody ever. No, it's 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 that's a, a story I'd want to see because it's a human it's a human story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it's 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 just it's just a, it's a story about a father and a son. That's awesome, it. awesome. French Festival is the uh, September twenty second for nine days. September twenty mm-hmm. second through the thirtieth. For more information and tickets, you can go to scrantonfringe.org. So you can go to scrantonfringe.org, September 22nd through the 30th. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. And if you're looking for a hotel, it's scrantonfringe.org backslash hotels with a plural. Correct. Connor, you're always gracious, and I really love you, man. I'm happy you're here. Thank you guys for having me. you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Did you have fun? I had a good time. Yeah, this is good. Yeah? Yeah. We're not done yet, but you're taking... All right, now we're done. (laughs) Okay. (laughs)